It's time to wake up and let the weirdness begin. It's the KBJ Show. To start your morning, Kevin <laughs> is the host. And his skin pigment is whiter than Casper the Ghost. Virginia <laughs> sounds like this. Nickname Vicious Beast. Yo, don't get her pissed. It's a Jason. Talks like a spaz. And he loves to talk about Bigfoot and stacks. Bro. So get ready, here we go. You're listening to 97.9 with the KBJ Show. All right, here we go. Welcome to the KBJ Show. Happy Wednesday. What the heck is going on? Hello, happy humping day. Mm, is that what it is? Yes. Humping day, huh? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. Don't stand still for too long or suits will get you. That's right, keep moving. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> wow, that's a lot different than hump day. It is. <laughs> it is a lot different. We're going to just change it up here. Yeah, I just yep. changed it. Don't drop that nickel. <laughs> Note the calendar. Okay. Well, uh, it is a world record Wednesday. You can always tell that because uh, Jaybird's got some kind of pizza clothing on. So he's got on the... Uh, Pizza hoodie today, or is that uh, going all the way down to a onesie? That's a onesie. Oh, that's, a onesie. Onesie. that's a pizza onesie, all yeah. the way up and down. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Looking good. He's got uh, popcorn in front of him, so uh, it's going to be a nice little snack today. It's part of the World Record Wednesday, and okay. I need a partner, and I think I lo- I'm looking at him. Oh, me? <laughs> I think you're my guy. <laughs> okay. All right. I need someone with speed. The only I- problem is when I get involved here, we don't get a lot of commentary, so it just kind of goes quiet. So I was going to put Denny's on, yeah. on that duty, have him commentate while you... Oh, okay. Because Virginia would be a good commentator, but you're right. She gets caught up in watching us yes. and then forgets to talk <laughs> and I'm on in the, the bit. And I notice there's nothing but a minute of silence. Yes. Well, I'm compelled. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> and, and I am tickled pink that you are compelled with the awesome content. Trying to drink it in. I can't do too many things at once. I'll probably commentate and then we'll figure the rest out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kevin's like, I want nothing to do with this crap. No, well, Kevin would just, be the best partner yeah. for this. It, it would, but it just, yeah. Kevin Kevin would be the best partner if he didn't hate being the best partner. No, I love being the partner, but it's just, you know, I, somebody's got to do the commentary. Back in, so. our, back in our old station, Kevin would have been my partner. Dang. We did a lot of bad radio back in our old station. <laughs> I, I was watching some of our old videos the yeah. other day. <laughs> Through time and experience, and I said, what are you doing there, Kev? <laughs> that cannot be good to listen to. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get that on. Luckily, we got KBJ TV. So, if the commentary does drop off, you can always see what's going on. If you like to uh, check it out, just go to YouTube and uh, look for the KBJ Show or go kbjshow.tv. What are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What you thinking about today, Jay Bird? I'm a big believer in the little things in life that really make you cozy because. I think a, a lot of small things will lead up to a lot of big, big things, if that makes sense. And okay. Sweet Denny's did something real nice for me. I, I struggle with keeping chargers for my phone around. I, I always put them around my house, and they always end up lost or broke. And then my phone is always at 11%. That would drive me insane. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would lose my mind if I looked down and my phone was at 11%. What kind of like the tumbler? The tumbler made my life one percent better when I discovered yeah. the tumbler. Mm-hmm. Well, what our sweet Danny's did, he 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 made sure that I have this nice little plug in here right by my station at work. And for the last two weeks, my phone has been at ninety percent, eighty eight percent, and it's all because of Denny's kindness, just to randomly do that for me and to help a, a brother out. Denny's, I love you, and I appreciate that. Okay. It's the small things, my friend. Yeah, know? it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that does that. Always, ma- I'll be driving into work, and I'll go. Dang it, I forgot my char. No, Denny set me up. Oh, he did that oh, awesome gotcha. thing. That's that, that. To me, are the best kind of presents. Totally. Yeah. When someone does something that makes your life convenient, when you know you're not good, I'm not good at that stuff. So, so your love language is acts of service. Well, recognizing what I'm bad at, and then doing it out of the blue for me, very kind. Denny's is feeding your love language. Languages. I tell him all the time, if he was a woman, he would be my woman. <laughs> 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 He'd be my girl. <laughs> What's on your mind today, Virginia? Well, I just want to throw out a little invitation. So not this Sunday. Okay. But next Sunday is Rocco's technical birthday. Okay. Sunday, July 10th. Uh-huh. And 
then we're going to have one of those water slides like Jay Bird had oh, at yeah. his party. Yeah, we're going to have the kind that um, I'm going to put it in the front yard. Okay. And it's got a big pool at the end of it, but it's built into the water slide, so it's all one big inflatable. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's gonna, awesome. I was going to say just doing it in the front yard because you have more allies in the front yard. You have enemies in the back. I agree. <laughs> and I think, you know, some of these golfers, if they see me in the yard, they're going to headhunt with their golf ball. Well, after la- was it last year that you had children of the corn going on on the golf course? There was 75 kids just running amok on the golf course during games. <laughs> that was when we put the water slide in the backyard. And, yeah, it did start a war. <laughs> well, there were teenagers running in between holes. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming like wild mania. Not for golf. Everything you <laughs> like during golf came off a bit. There was so many of them, Kevin. Oh, yeah. I, they multiply. When you tell a I teen do do. water yeah. slide, you're like, oh, yeah. no, there's going to be 10 kids here. What? There's 40 kids here. Right. Well, Virginia basically made a makeshift the rapids in the backyard into the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> The kids soaked up the water slide, and they were flying off of it onto the golf course because there was no stopping them. That's the only way to do it, yeah. But that's a perfect example because that night that she had that going on or that day, she had the pool stuff and the slide in the back, and all the kids were back there. Then she had a mixer kind of a thing, a tent with drinks and okay. music in the front yard. Oh, yeah. And only, I would say, 25% of the, the front yard people hate Virginia. Most of the people <laughs> oh, really? okay. most of the people like her on, okay. on the on the front yard. So liked in the front, hated in the back. Is that what's going on? Really? Only two neighbors in the front hate me. And I would say one, two, three, four, five, six neighbors like me in okay. the front. Okay. So two out of six really don't like me. Well, I mean, <laughs> look, mom, mama gets turned. She oh, she yeah. she makes a party. She gets the music out. When I start drinking too, I love a a rap song with expletives. Okay, yeah. And I like to pray it loud. And she doesn't really care if you don't like it. And she'll let you know that. I've, yeah. no, I've noticed that as well. You don't like Cardi B? Uh, go scratch. Oh, man, that's when you know you've lost Virginia. And that is my... As soon as you hear Cardi B fire up, it's time to run for the hills. It's, it's why, it's, I'm not even kidding. You can't, it's, it's why I leave. <laughs> there comes as, Cardi B. There goes Bird. As soon as I hear her play Cardi B, I am out. <laughs> I, if you look back at the last three times we've hung out... It's, it's, it's always on Q Curry B. Every time. Q Bird for the door. It's a water line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign. That's I just, the sign. I just know I got to get away. I've lost her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. So that's next Sunday. Okay. All that sounds like fun. y'all are welcome. Okay. Food, fun. Magnolia's bringing a bunch of her friends too because they love a water slide. So yeah. they might actually end up commandeering Rocco's birthday. Okay. So is that going into the vacation or is that is that coming back from vacation it's the last day oh, Virginia. of vacation you are, it's Rocco's birthday it's his real birthday I yeah. hear you I hear you yeah, I mean, you don't want to come back here rested, do you? No, I just, I just, I've been to Rocco's parties before, Kevin, and they're some of the most. Oh, I know. The, the biggest Rangers in town. Turn. I they get I, going. I, I went to uh, the biggest Rangers in college was not as good as Rocco's parties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I got on my mind here today, I was excited to watch a really good match yesterday with uh, Serena Williams. You know, she's been out for a while. She was injured and pretty much took off most of last year and she's just right on that man she needs just one more major that's really it Wimbledon is kind of one of the biggest and I just remember some of her big wins that uh, she had had at Wimbledon so I was going into it yesterday really optimistic hoping that uh, she would be able to do great and uh, it was a challenge she went up against the uh, 115th player in the world yesterday and she hasn't played for a while it was a really good match it was a nice little back and forth, and it was exciting. And there was a, a one point you really thought that Serena was going to be able to do it. She just had to finish it off, and she just didn't have that extra gear. Damn. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, there's a lot going on in life. And, I think uh, she's got like a, an injury, doesn't she, or something? She had, yeah, yeah. That's why she had taken off. And so she's back from that. She should be a well-heeled. But, you know, I mean, she sucks, man. She, you know, is she's past the age where a lot of uh, women of her age, or even men, anyone 
has ever competed at a highly competitive level. I get it, because there are times where I am doing a world record Wednesday, and I'm just looking for that extra gear. I just can't find it, Virginia. Oh, my gosh. You have so much in common with Serena. <laughs> yes. Well, we're athletes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she put up a valiant effort, and you know what? She said that uh, she, at the end, it, it was really good because you never know because uh, she's such a competitor, and like any great competitor, she gets very emotional. Sure. She was, she was very calm at the end. She just said, look, this, I gave it the best I can do right now, and that's where it was. You know, that is the best that she had right now, which, you know, if you love seeing Serena do well and you're really hoping she can get that extra major, maybe it just realizes She's like, okay, she's got a little bit more to go. You know, there's the, the shape that you got to be in because that match went late yesterday as well. I mean, it just kept going and going. I'm like, how exhausted are you? The kind of shape that you have to be in, especially as you get older. She's to try 40. To win one of those. She, she turned 40. Yeah. Playing on grass, too. That ball moves pretty darn quick. Yeah, no doubt. So, you know, she just was – she didn't have that extra typical Serena gear – yesterday and uh, she was bounced out of the first round of uh, Wimbledon to Harmony Tan of France but you know hopes that she'll be able to rebound and maybe she's got another year or two of a uh, great competitive tennis ahead of her so there you go that's uh, what I got in my mind but uh, was interesting to see well this is on Jaybird's mind last week there was another black bear sighting and there's been a lot of them there was the one that was in Naples just kind of wandering around neighborhoods and every time I turn around there's another story I think there's one of the treasure coast that was out and you're like what the heck's going on I believe it is something to do with development and maybe mating seasons and I don't even know what's going on but there's been like three or four different black bear stories you know, right here in South Florida, in areas that you don't typically see them. And the one that we had was in Royal Palm Beach, which I guess it's not typical to see a black bear just kind of wandering around a neighborhood. Well, it became a bigger story because, unfortunately, that black bear was wound up being shot dead. And there were two agencies that were involved, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and then Palm Beach County Sheriffs, who actually pulled the trigger and downed the bear. And uh, now the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is saying that the Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies shouldn't have shot and killed that juvenile Florida black bear last week in Royal Palm. They should have sent him to juvie. Yeah, you're right. Should have been a detention center instead. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh. So could they could they cops have uh, used a taser instead? Is that, is that the debate? Is that where some of the the fighting's coming from? Well, and the thing that I can't quite get from it is getting a trapper or a trank dart. dart and apparently that neither one was available and they couldn't get that and the thing i don't understand is there was an ample amount of time because we were talking about a four hour standoff the bear is in the tree for four hours and they were trying to keep it in the tree because when it gets down, then they're scared about it roaming through backyards and residential neighborhoods. Now they're chasing a bear. You're right. If you tase it, you're probably just going to aggravate it. You know what I mean? If you, if, well, if you did, and you, you got to get close. A sure. taser is pretty much a close up type of weapon. And, and they would you know, likely say that you don't want somebody getting close up to a Florida black bear. And the taser won't trank it either. It'll just kind of possibly make it more mad. Yeah. So that was the one thing, even just reading through the story. Uh, the only thing that I got from it was that this is not typical. So maybe they weren't prepared with the trank dart and that's not something that they do gotcha why florida fish and wildlife didn't have a trapper or a trank dart that they could help out with i don't know maybe they're trying to get it and they're just like this is very rare this uh, doesn't happen so they don't want the bear wandering around the neighborhood or getting into traffic and then you know other lives are a danger and the florida black bear itself they say is shy and generally not aggressive so i don't know if that was the worry but Palm Beach Sheriff's Office is standing by its decision, saying that the deputies had to protect the residents of the nearby neighborhood, but Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, kind of disagrees. And the one description of the bear was that it had come down and it sounded like it was heading away from the deputies when it was shot four times. Uh, one of them was kind of a mercy kill at the end after it had been shot a couple of times. So Dang. that's kind of the whole debate about uh, what is going on from the two agencies that are kind of pointing the finger at each other, PBSO saying this is what we need to do, and Florida Fish and Wildlife saying, I don't know, did you? So I think the one thing PBSO is standing by is that this isn't something that they are typically having to face. Now, if you don't know, the Florida black bear is protected under Florida law. So 
I guess when you're talking about a legal agency that they are allowed to extend past those bounds. But for anybody else, don't be messing with the bears. So Mm. from the time that the bear call was made, like, oh, gosh, we got a bear. Get out here. Mm -hmm. The PBSO obviously showed up quickly and they were on the scene. Did they call Fish and Wildlife to get out there quickly? Bring your trank darts. Come on down. And maybe they didn't come down or did they not make that call? Yeah, I think they were both involved with it. That's just what I didn't fully understand. A tranquilizer dart apparently was not available. I don't know if PBSO carries them, why they were having such a hard time finding a trapper. I That I don't know. I mean, it was four hours. That was the one thing, like I said. I four read, hours. I read the article uh, closely and carefully. And what Fish and Wildlife was hoping is that they could kind of, you know, shoo the bear back into the wilderness and that's kind of a debate too pbso saying there was nowhere north south east west for it to go and i think fish and wildlife saying ah there were two different paths we could have kind of ushered the bear back into the wilderness and everything should have been good the bear was moving away from you it wasn't showing any signs of aggression so that's just kind of where it all gets down and i know it's a very heated issue there because man i went on next door and people were just, <laughs> oh, I, it's they were going off on it I next know. door is the new facebook as far as fighting yeah so it's one of those things that is a very sad story and i would imagine based on the heat that both agencies are getting from this is they'll probably say let's be prepared if a black bear gets into in every agency throughout south florida Hey, you just never know. And people don't want to see these animals harmed, especially when this is, I mean, it's a, it's a cuddly looking, shy, yeah. non aggressive animal that we just love here. It's a protected species. And you hate to see us do any more damage to the wildlife that is around here. So the encouragement would be let's, it may be rare, but let's be prepared. Four hours seems like it should be enough time that somebody can come up with a solution. That is a long time. Other than you wind up with four bullets and a bear, and it doesn't make it out. I mean, four bullets? Yeah. Dang. Uh Uh-huh. That's what it took to put the bear down. So that is the uh, latest on uh, that story if you're wanting an update. Hey, a lot of comments uh, rolling in. As the finger pointing continues with the Florida black bear that was shot last week in Royal Palm Beach by Palm Beach Sheriff, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Of course, they would have liked to have seen the bear preserved. There was a four-hour standoff, and the bear climbed down from the tree, and it was kind of moving away from the officers, but um, I guess they were worried it was going to wander into the neighborhood and maul somebody or wander into traffic and cause an accident, so they downed the bear. Uh, A lot of questions about uh, where was a trank dart or a trapper or why couldn't we have done something some people are texting and saying i mean line country safari they don't have a dart gun they're 20 minutes away you know they are packing they've got their stuff you'd together think. at lion country safari they absolutely have their stuff together you'd think i i just well, i know i walked away from the story with still more questions four hours seems like a lot of time to get a trank dart even if you have to make one yeah i feel like i could make one and part of what uh, pbso was saying was there was really nowhere for the bear to go but but uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife are kind of uh, refuting that. Dang. Well, were they on the scene? Because I feel like yeah. if they were there, they could have handled it. But if they weren't there, then they can't be mad. They were there. Okay. So but, were they arguing with the sheriffs? Well, the sheriff, they had lead on it. So they were the uh, agency that got to make the decisions. Look, wow, I it, bet that was dramatic. If we want to get both agencies on the phone right now and have them work it out yeah. live on the air, we'd Kevin love to hear. is the best moderator. He's a great moderator. We'd uh, love to hear both okay. perspectives. Look, yeah. the airwaves are yours. Somebody texted in and said, I know that area in Royal Palm, and there's a whole nature preserve over there where the bear was shot. So that's Uh-oh. what a lot of people in the area are saying. They're not uh, very happy. Some people think that this is maybe our Harambe the gorilla. Whoa. So maybe this bear needs a name. Okay. You know? Yeah, so I, I believe it's nameless right now. We've had some big animals. Remember Bobo? Yeah, Bobo, that was the tiger. The tiger? Got loose, yeah. I, I mean, it just, yeah, we're always kind of dealing with that. That's why I was really surprised. They said we didn't really have a trank dart. I'm like, there's always some kind of tiger or a llama or <laughs> yes. kangaroo or something that's always running around the streets of South Florida, it this, seems. This is South Florida. 
There should be a lot of trank darts. For yes, humans, too. Just, uh, I agree. <laughs> a lot I got of humans some co-workers I'd like to trank. Yeah, there's a few people that need to be tranked up in this oh, piece. I would do so much damage with one of those blow darts. I think it would take at least two to three tranks to get Virginia down. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, she can, ah, she'd still be powering through it. Get her right in the neck. Oh, my gosh, she's still coming at us. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Good you better luck. hope I don't get to you. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> So we'll see if there's uh, any more that comes from that. But uh, right now, i got to say I'm a little unsatisfied with the story. Well, it is very hot in South Florida. In fact, you know, I, I've been here long enough now, like 23 years, that I, I can really kind of tell you about every week. There's a different way that you feel about South Florida. I always tell you that the humidity kind of goes away, and all of a sudden we have brand new weather. It's the second week of November. That's just really what it is. I have, I've mapped it year after year after year. You are safe to say by the second week of November, we're back to, ah, oh, this is glorious, amazing weather. Now, you might have good weather before that, a little bit here and there, but to regularly get into day and day, that's where it happens. My other marker is 4th of July weekend. That is what really kicks off the swampiness. <laughs> we, get, we kick to a different level, Sunfest weekend. From that point forward, you get too hot. Now you're at hot and swampy. That's kind of where we are. So that's the forecast that we're looking at. And pretty much every day you can count on you're going to be dodging storms. They're going to be coming in. And that's the way it looks. We're getting the temperatures now in the low 90s where it sits. And you're always going to see a 40% chance of rain, which is realistically going to be 80%. And a weird amphibian and reptile crawling around. Yeah, well, I can tell because just this last week, it's there. When I know we're really in the swampiness, all of my sliders have the condensation on it. Yes. Didn't start getting that until this week. And I'm like, yep, look, 4th of July week. Week. This is where swampiness comes in. So we, after this weekend, will be at full swampiness. <laughs> You're right. And for me, that's full out binge watching season because there's really, this is our winter. There's not really a lot you can do for a long period of time outside before you're just like zapped. It was two years ago, me and my buddies, it was Bigfoot, Joe Ponton. We all decided to play wiffle ball at noon in the middle of July. And Ooh, yeah. I had to, I yeah. drove to the hospital and I was mm. debating on whether going in or not. I yeah. thought I had heat exhaustion. No, it's, it's, it's rough. It was, man. Yeah. Be, be yeah. Very careful. After about 11 a.m., that's why you'll see golfers out there legit teeing off at 3 a.m. Because, you know, you, you've got to get out there before it gets too crazy. Bigfoot was so concerned about me because I, I started driving north to my house at I-95, and I lived south. It goes, where were you going? I go, I don't know, man. Yeah. Dang. Got heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it does. So if you're going to be inside and you're going to be doing some binge watching, what platform are you using? Now, Netflix was the old staple, but is it the new staple? I'm looking at some numbers that are out from WIP Media where they've done a pretty big study of streaming satisfaction in this last year. And Netflix is falling down the list. Uh -oh. For satisfaction, Netflix now falls at number four on the list. They were at 90% satisfaction last year. This year, they're down to 80%. I think a lot of that might have had to do with the price hikes. In fact, nearly 70% of people who canceled Netflix in the last year said it was due to their price hikes. Gotcha. So it may be more of price over content that's doing it. But there are some other platforms that have really stepped up their game. In fact, HBO Max is the one to watch right now. Number one for streaming satisfaction. It was solid last year, but it's at 94% this year. Number one, Disney is holding ground at 88%. Then you've got Hulu, which is doing pretty well at number three. Behind Netflix is Paramount, Apple TV, and Amazon. That's your top seven streaming services. The one thing I will tell you, though, is Netflix still remains the most popular choice for subscribers if they could only keep one streaming service. Netflix is still the one people go with, even though they're now fourth on satisfaction. Is it because they have the most meat, the most content, the most I, stuff? I would say so. I, 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 would, I would guess that's it because, you know, now I find myself, I am going to HBO Max a good bit. And... I agree that it's awesome, but it doesn't have the depth. I could maybe find five things I'd want to watch on Netflix. I maybe would find two to three on HBO Max. That would be the Kev ratio.
in my mind right now. HBO, when they do their own original kind of content, it is... It's pretty solid. It's really hard for them to miss. I, I can't think mm. of much of HBO. Even the stuff they cancel, that yeah. sucks. They were number one as well. They talked about just their quality of content, and HBO Max was number one on that, much higher than Netflix, because Netflix really now is hit or miss, and I feel like it's more miss than hit for me. I would feel... If I had to do a ratio, I would say 30 to 40% of Netflix shows I try out, it's a hit for me. I'd say it misses more than it hits. Even the crap that I don't like on HBO is still pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. They say HBO Max and Disney Plus seen as the best value in streaming. Netflix is last for the best value. Because they are expensive. And there's yeah. a lot of crud on Netflix, there man. There is. Like I said, the ratios, my own personal ratios, if they're like your ratios, it's more missed than it is hit. And when they're hiking up the rates, that's why the satisfaction is dropping for Netflix. I love me some YouTube, but the problem with YouTube is you, you don't get certain shows that you want to get. Okay. You have to go to mm -hmm. some stream. You know, if you want to watch Better Call Saul or something like yeah. that, I'm going to have to go to... You get a lot of good content, but that content that maybe you really want to see, like a specific show, you're not going to get on YouTube. Or if you do get on YouTube, you have to pay for the whole thing. Oh, really? It's be all, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then people aren't going to want to do that. Well, I will tell you, I know some people may think this is a good idea. Other people may not. The Walt Disney Board of Directors, they unanimously voted to extend their CEO's contract for three more years. Bob Chappick. He's the guy that's been in there. Now, some people may say, I'm not sure if I like this idea because Disney shares have fallen nearly 40% this year. And they've had some issues. And I don't know with that latest uh, light year that came out, I think you pretty much called out a flop now. It made $30 million in its opening week. Yeah, people are saying it wasn't that great. $30 million doesn't sound like a lot of money for a Disney movie. It, it well underperformed. What not they with all the Toy Story hype. Yeah, so I don't know if uh, Pixar and Disney are still attached. I thought they were, and I thought Disney still sold those toys. I could there be wrong. There is a Toy Story attraction at Disney, because we're going to it this weekend. Okay, yeah, so they're at together. Hollywood Studios. There uh, absolutely is, because you have to make reservations now for every ride and attraction. Yeah. Oh, my brain's going to break. I, I don't like that, by the way. It's so weird. It, it just the one thing that I, I hear now, and I mean, this doesn't mean anything, but it just seems like more of the stories I hear with Disney have a little bit of a negative twinge to them, whether it's, you know, they got this entanglement with the state of Florida or it might be that uh, some people are just saying, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like going to the park yesterday, Virginia, you were breaking down the complications and some people, even though I've talked to their Disney diehards aren't necessarily too fond of what they're doing with reserving your space and paying for this. And some people are saying that I paid and I still didn't get what I thought I was going to pay for. Right. Like, even if you get the Genie Plus, which costs a lot extra, like, yeah. it's only good for skip the line for two rides. I thought I read yesterday. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, it's just, it, there's so many layers of complication. I'm not that smart, Disney. I'm not going to sit and spend five hours researching how to go to the park. I just want to go to the park and have a good time and not have to wait in a three-hour line for each attraction like mm -hmm. there's got to be a way to simplify this without requiring me to do uh, term papers worth of research <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm hearing more smoke around disney than i've ever heard in my life disney was always just a sweet lovely place and it yeah. was just you know sunshine and rainbows and all no, that kind of good stuff there's some heat around the mouse yeah there really is and that's why i was kind of surprised to see this but there is one reason why disney re-upped their ceo for three more years it's all Disney Plus. The streaming service grew to 137.7 million global subscribers during the pandemic. And as I was just reading off, you know, they're right up there. HBO Max and Disney, best value in streaming. It's really because of that app huh. that he's made that. And that's why he's going to get three more years. I mean, I have Disney Plus and I have it just for the Star Wars stuff. So yeah. I steal your Disney Plus and so do a couple of my neighbors. I know. Every time I go on Disney Plus, there's a new new neighbor on my thing. <laughs> I think, we can, I think we're, we've, we've hit our, our quota, dog. Oh, Rocco has signed up everybody he can. Yeah, he, he's tapped out at adding new members. Yeah, who's Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> Wreck it. Oh, Ralph is down the street. Okay. <laughs> you know, i got a lot of comments uh, rolling in about uh, Disney. The CEO has been uh, up for another three years. Uh, some people are very uh, disenfranchised with Disney right now. 
Somebody uh, texted and said, yes, this Disney CEO is the worst they've ever had. The Polynesian Resort got rid of their Spirit of Aloha show that was excellent uh, to put up a Disney Vacation Club tower. It's the Spirit of Goodbye, not the Spirit of Aloha. Yes, you're right. They're saying they're changing things that they should not be changing. So uh, that might be it. This, this guy is they're making a lot of changes. And anytime you make changes, you know, a lot of times... People are not going to like it. Well, that whole Disney, because uh, they're inundating me with emails right now because I'm coming this sure, weekend yeah. up there. The Disney Club vacation is a timeshare. And haven't we learned that timeshares are bad? So if they're knocking down mm. Polynesian resorts to add timeshares, I don't know. I just, I just don't like the way that sits on the tongue. Don't yeah. we all know that timeshares trap you into paying and paying and paying and paying and maybe not ever being able to feel good about your investment and they can raise your money that you pay whenever they want and have all these add-on fees yeah oh. yeah so if you want to go let's say we're at the park and i just I, I, I go hey, i have a craving to go to it's a small world let's go right now we can't we can't do that anymore you, you have can to go but you're just going to stand in the longest line it, what what it, what they're trying to make you do now is make reservations for certain rides, and there's like a, a a page of tips that tell you when to go to each ride, when not to go, and then you can put reservations for certain rides, and then you have to go at that time, and you have that little window, and every meal you get has to be pre-planned. What time you're going to be there? When you're going to go? Like, ah! and if you don't do it that way, you are going to be waiting even more. Yes. Well, the thing, and it's been a while since I've had young children. But the one thing I do remember is you can't really be that rigid in your planning because no. young kids, they always screw it up. They vomit on themselves. Yep. They pee themselves. Yes. They do something that adds 30 minutes that you didn't account for. You can never plan your day with children. It's no. always going to be like, let's see where we are at this time. And having a rigid schedule like that, if that's how they expect it, to me, it seems like it's a little out of touch with what it's like to have young kids. We went to Universal last Christmas, mm -hmm. and you could buy what's called a little fast pass. Yeah. And you add it to your ticket, and boom. It, it, you don't have to make any reservations. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to tell Mickey where you're going to be. Yeah. It, it, it made it so much easier. <laughs> right. Because you just show up whenever you want, and you, you get to skip a good bit of the the line when you pay the little you know 50 bucks extra or whatever mm -hmm. it is you need the flexibility and also you don't want to make a very difficult vacation even more difficult no sounds like mickey's watching your every move i can't figure out all the details of this app it is it's beyond my skill set as a 48 year old woman who's not that plugged into computers and apps and all that mm, like it's yeah. asking a lot of me and if yeah. i'm struggling with it i'm quite certain that most of the other parents out there that are juggling kids are struggling as well sure well on top of it all that uh, reedy creek thing kicks in tomorrow so oh. they will be giving that back to uh, florida and they're gonna have to pay all the extra taxes now well, they, they, they were doing all that, yeah, so it'll be something Ooh. that Florida now has to work out. That was the thing, was they had the autonomy over that area, so that will end tomorrow. So that, Interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's a part of it as well. Well, they uh, came out with the safest cities to raise a family in Florida. And let me tell you, there are a lot here in South Florida to look at. In fact, uh, we dominate for the uh, safest cities to raise a family, according to SafeWise. And there's one county that excels, and there's one city that listens to us that is number one. Any guesses before I give you the results? What is the number one county, would you say, to raise a family? Bird. Yeah. Only talking about Palm Beach County. Okay. All right, Virginia, what do you think? I agree. Or, okay. yeah, I don't know. Martin County? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is a tricky question. It is. Kevin kind of worded it trickily. I did? I don't think this is a trick. I think my man is just trying to get through a story. <laughs> I don't know. I smell a rat. Okay. <laughs> I'll uh, simplify it. Just, just, just get through this week. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> Broward County is the county that has several different cities. In fact, if you look at the top five, in Broward County, you got Coral Springs, Coconut Creek, Pembroke Pines, and Miramar. Two, three, four, and five on the list of the safest cities to raise a family in Florida. Huh. It's pretty impressive, Broward. Not bad. It is. Number one city, though, Port St. Lucie. 
The huh. Pizzle. Yeah, safest city to raise a family, according to SafeWise. I love me some Pizzle. Yeah. I always said if it was closer to the station, I would be a Port St. Lucian. Uh-huh. So there you go. So congrats to uh, PSL. If you're a family there, you got to be pretty proud of yourself. Johns Creek, Georgia was ruled the safest city in America for raising a family. So there you go. That is the uh, stat. So Brower doing it well, and congrats, PSL. It's the KVJ, Dirt of the Day. It's the KVJ, Dirt of the Day. Virginia, take it away, because you know we need that Dirt of the Day. Well, Ghislaine Maxwell had her sentencing yesterday, in case you missed it. Judge Allison Nathan said that, yeah... Elaine, you're not being punished for Epstein. You're being punished for the role that you played for Epstein. So she wanted to make that very clear. A lot of people have said, well, oh, Jeffrey Epstein wasn't there. So they gave Ghislaine a tougher sentence because she's paying his price. And the judge was like, no, that is not what's happening here. She had a direct and repeated participation in a horrific scheme. And that is why she was sentenced to 20 years in prison for sex trafficking minor girls for Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, She was also fined $750,000, which her lawyer says that she does not have the money to pay. So not sure how that works Hmm. out. Okay. Um, The 20-year sentence represents a pivotal moment in international sex trafficking. This is a way that, you know, the judges can show, look, this will not be tolerated. If you're involved with this, even if you're rich and powerful, you might delay your consequences, but you will have your day in court and you will pay handsomely. Yeah, I think there are some people that just feel like there are others that still need to pay who never will. I agree with you. They want names, Virginia. I I wanted the names, too, but guess what? Jeffrey's dead because they killed him. The dead can't name names, and it would have been really nice to get those names from Jeffrey. Unless you're watching the movie Ghost because he does name names. All right, sorry. I didn't mean to hijack your dirt. What? Never mind. (laughs) Sorry. Um, In other news, Travis Barker had to be rushed to the hospital. Apparently, he was having a medical infection situation, and he was at the West Hills Medical Center, and they were like, "Uh, we need to transport you to Cedar sinai in an ambulance. Pretty sure I said it yesterday. It's called the Kardashian curse. I told y'all. I said, Barker, run. I, th- I said Didn't it yesterday. Didn't take long. He can't. He's in the hospital. <laughs> they got he ain't him. running nowhere. <laughs> he got cursed. They nope. got him. He's so cursed. He has in the past had some medical issues with blood clots and um, staph infections and, and all kinds of stuff. So um, it might be from that. It might be from other stuff. We don't know. We just know that both he and Courtney were asking for prayers on social media yesterday. Okay. And how horrific is this? Uh, A guy who's been stalking Ariana Grande has been arrested again. This time, they arrested him after breaking into her home. He was in her house. He's the same guy that was busted before at her home with a knife screaming, I'll effing kill you. He got in. How did they get so close? I mean, he you're got Ariana in. Grande. You're he a, got in the house. You're a mega star. I have to wait 10 minutes sometimes to get to the witch's house up in Tequesta. How is it hard for me to get into Virginia's place, but Ariana Grande has people breaking into hers? And there are so many times I can't get in my own house. And <laughs> yeah. I, just, I don't understand. Oh, it's so easy. You're how, right. How do you get into Ariana Grande's house? Seriously. This guy who is defying a restraining order because he's done it before. Uh, Uh, Aaron Brown is his name. He is currently being held and not being released. So that's a good thing. She don't have no guard gate? She don't have no guard? I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep... Uh, this is it's weird to me when I hear these stories. I feel like that'd be the first place where I spent my money, you know, instead of seven rings, I'm buying jewelry, I'm buying ATMs, I'm buying well, bags, I'm buying shoes. I, <laughs> like, no, buy a security guard first. I feel like you could buy, you could have dogs, you could have secure, with the kind of money she You could had. have a fleet right. of dogs and security guards, but yeah, the guy got in the house. And that's what's going on in your dirt. Okay. 
got uh, celebrity birthday today worth mentioning. Happy birthday to Nicole Scherzinger, former lead singer of the Pussycat Dolls. She's turning 44 today. Still killing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's doing great, I guess. She's doing TV shows and such now, right? Yeah, good for her. Okay. Way I, less work than dancing around and sweating your butt off with of the Pussycat Dolls. I'm not sure that they all liked each other in that band. Or that group. Get any group of women together. I'm not sure they like each other. Yeah, well, I don't think they typically pick who's going to be in the group. It's someone saying, you and you and you and you now make it work. Right. Yeah. Now you got to be friends. We're in charge. You guys work for us. Yeah, they're all competitive. They all want to be the lead. They all want to stand in front. <laughs> they all hate the call. Right. Yeah, it's no wonder. <laughs> also, a birthday shout out to our daughter, Taylor. Happy 25th. Love, Dad and Trish. Thank you so much. Want to get your own birthday shout out? You just send us an email, mail at kvjshow.com, M A I L at kvjshow.com. We'll give you the hookup for that. World record Wednesday, gotta give your best. World record Wednesday, we're chasing greatness today. Okay, got a fun little world record today. Jaybird is going to be going for the most popcorn caught in the mouth in one minute. I need a partner. It's 54 kernels. That would uh, be the record. So I think I'm going to rec- uh, recruit Sweet Denny's for this thing. Okay. Oh, he's going to be good. He's th- known for his speed. Well, here's here's. let's talk about this. Mm. Should I be the thrower and he he's the catcher? He's good. The thing with Danny's, mm. he's very good at opening up his mouth, resting his tongue, mm-hmm. and letting things kind of just, okay. I don't know, just kind of, yeah. ca- he's a good catcher. Yeah, whatever was, you think, man. You're the, you're the coach of this. So you'll be the pitcher, he'll be the catcher? I'm talking strategy right now. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, I really want to mm. recruit Ralston. Ralston yeah. does not think, I don't think he wants to lace up and get in the game. And I, and I understand that. Yeah. I get it. You want to commentate because you don't have. It doesn't oh, work out well. You don't have a lot of faith in your <laughs> assistant. Oh, over damn. Here. <laughs> well, I just, I get it. She gets very mesmerized by these <laughs> things. And. Uh, our, our audience, I think, gets a little lost sometimes. So. <laughs> okay. I can't do two things at once. You know that. So yeah. I'm going to be quick. Denny's going to be steady. You just steady there like a rock, opening up that mouth. Okay. Now, do you go at a different angle? Does he try to get lower than uh, where you're standing? Because right now you're sitting. Do you stand and then you try yeah. to throw it down? Is that easier to do? I- I'm going to stand right here. Okay. Denny's will be right there. And we'll go from right there. Okay. All right. So Bird is going to stand. And is there a distance that you have to be? Yeah, I believe it was uh, five, four, four and a half feet, I believe it was. Four and a half feet? Yeah. Because I, I would think that'd be pretty uh, pretty important because otherwise, yeah, you could get a foot away and just doink, 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 and bam. Yeah. This yeah. is about the right distance. It looks like you've measured it. Yeah. I'm estimating. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. So. Okay. No, that, that's the right distance. That's the right distance. Okay, here we go. I hope this isn't the one that Guinness decides to look at and then denies us. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time Guinness has screwed me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 60 seconds is what you got. 54 kernels is the record. Half of that we'd be right at about uh, 27. Virginia, do you think that uh, they're going to get to the halfway mark in KVJ Respectable? Definitely. Okay. Okay, Big D. Okay, yeah. so he's saying definitely. Virginia is going to go over. Suits, you over under. I'm going to go uh, under with Suits. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think, your boy. I think it's going to be tricky. He did a boy. big under. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he really dunked on that one. Yeah. Okay, all right. 54, the world record, 27, KVJ, respectable. In 60 seconds, Jay Bird is throwing popcorn kernels into Denny's mouth. Your time begins now. Okay, throws one. It's a miss. Second one, it's off. Denny's trying to get two. We've thrown about four. There's the first one in. Two, three, four. Okay, got a little bit of a groove now going on. Okay, missed on the next few. You got Sorry, one man. more there. Okay, we're up at uh, five now. Okay. That one just off of Denny's face. We got six in the pie hole. That one went a little bit far, but bounced off. Looked like he got it. Denny's got seven now as he's chewing. Okay, Bird is throwing. Miss, miss, miss. Oh, there's another make. There's nine, ten. We're at ten right now. We've got 11 in with 27 seconds left. Okay, looking at about, uh, oh, he just threw several at one time. Oh, boy. We got 12, 13. Okay, right off the face. Okay, we're at another miss. He's kind of throwing popcorn dust with 15 seconds left. 
All right, here we go. Now it's just kind of falling apart. Uh, there's dust. He threw. I don't know if that counts because he just threw a bunch of shrapnel. It's kind of really five, what a four, mess. three, two, one, and right about 13. I think we are. Fallen way short of the record and uh, about half of KVJ respectable. Your tosser got tired and lazy. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's I, a peanut gallery for you. I, I think I speak for all men. Panda is such a lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's, that's a fun one, though, you can try. Just that was fun. Get that and going, yeah. I hate to admit it, but I am kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he started throwing handfuls of kernels, and then poor Denny's didn't know which kernel to chase, so yeah. then it just became, like, confusion. I don't no, know. we get it. You're not happy. We understand. Yeah. A lot of mistakes. Uh, yeah. A you, lot of mistakes. You get it? <laughs> well, uh, we've got uh, Hanley on here from Delray Beach for a little Camp KVJ. You've got three kids you're trying to entertain. Is that right, Hallie? I do. Wow. Okay. What are the ages of your kids? I've got a four-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a thirteen-year-old. Oh, okay. Poor you. Yeah, that's that's a lot of variety because uh, their <laughs> interests are all probably pretty different, right? Ooh. Oh yes, mm-hmm. but their energy is way up. So. You, you need to buy her a day nanny and a spa visit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That'd be a great camp, KVJ, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, well, luckily, the good news about this is when you're talking about uh, Rapids Water Park and Lion Country Safari, it's really kind of an all-age thing. Adults love it as well. you got a lot of water park-themed stuff there that uh, any age can enjoy, including yourself. And uh, they do have a uh, bar for adults, Hallie, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm there. There you go. All right, well, enjoy yourself and have fun with the kids this summer, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Camp KBJ again back tomorrow. If you want to get uh, those tickets, we got them for you. Get a little uh, popcorn clean up here. Looking at uh, the world record attempt that just happened. 13 kernels in 60 seconds. World record was 54. Slightly off. Yeah, Virginia was uh, thinking (laughs) maybe a little sluggish. Now, Jaybird last night, his because, you know, a lot of times athletes – uh, the night before, <laughs> they, they have a meal. Like if you, Virginia, are a marathon runner, uh, my wife who you know grew up doing uh, cross country, that was the one thing. She always looked forward to the pre-night meal because it would, you carb load, you have a lot of spaghetti and things like that. And it was really big because it would carry into the next day and it would affect your performance. Sure. So true athletes are always worried about what they eat the night before. <laughs> and uh, this athlete last night had uh, an interesting choice. For his uh, pre-workout meal, uh, it's called a mini pie. That's not a mini pie. This is a mini pie. That is not a mini pie. Kevin, it goes hand pie. It goes mini pie. Okay. Then it goes regular pie. Okay, this, yeah. is, this is a mini. That is a medium pie. That's not. It's a mini pie. That is not a mini pie. Let's... Patty Labelle makes mini pies, and every Thanksgiving you see them out there. They're next to the regular pies at Walmart. They're little mini pies. That's a medium pie. Would you say that is about a five inch diameter, five to six inches? About what we're looking at, probably six inch. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, from side to side. Look, if you, it, it in some circles, or it, it's really semantics. It's this is a mini pie. That is not a mini pie. Nobody ever calls it a medium pie. When have you ever, right. fact, Kevin? Yeah. When have you ever heard someone describe it as a medium? I, I pie? I get the sizing thing, but I, I understand. I, I see both points because you're right. You got to name it something, and mini pie is that's probably a good name, but. Just in our language understanding, the word mini often tells you that you're not getting a lot. And Publix that, tr- is tricking you with that. Look, Publix, I see you. Well, I, I get it. It almost says with a mini pie, you can house this by yourself. Exactly. it's a mini pie. Don't and, feel bad about the calories. It's mini. Dude, I, you can't absolutely house this yourself. But I, you shouldn't. Well, you shouldn't do a lot of things. Sure. And I'm talking to you, Sinicki. There's yeah. a lot of things you shouldn't be doing either. That's like a at least four full size pieces of pie. That, that is, that, she's out. She's out no, of her mind. That is no, not it's, four it's, pieces. It's two, it's two solid pieces, I'd say, right? That's one and a half slices of pie. No, it's not. That is. That, that is one and a half slices of restaurant pie. Ain't nothing mini about that. Publix trick you and make you feel like, oh, I'm not as big of a uh, ridiculously calorie-consuming maniac. It's mini. 
Mm. I, I, look, I call it, I, I got one for this, this one's for Denny's. I don't think he wants it because oh. it's so good. Did you have to get it out of your house? Is I that did. what's going on? Well, I got one for him yesterday, but yeah. he, we, we 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 both were craving key lime pie. Oh yeah. And, uh, how, how how where did it rate on the key lime pie scale? How, how yummy is it? I'll give it this this pie because I ate it last night. I'll give it four and a half slices out of five. It's solid, then. Yeah, it's really good. It's good. It's tough to turn down. Yeah. You get a little craving, a little itching for some key lime pie, look out. Mini pie's getting housed. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> this, this thing did not... T- it was gone and it was gone within a commercial break. That's not a yeah. mini pie. That's a mini lie. That's not mini. I, I ate it, during, it looks delicious. <laughs> I, I ate it, during, it looks delicious. I ate it during Wheel of Fortune, and it was a great round of Wheel of Fortune. It just okay. everything hit. Everything was yeah. just coming together. It was nice, yeah. man. And then instant, oh, I feel guilty. I ate so much pie. <laughs> We're going to post this on social media. We'll let the people say, is this a mini pie? I think okay. it is. <laughs> Get out well, of here. I would argue, what else are you going to call it? Yeah. There's a different size pie tin that qualifies as a mini pie. It is truly, there's another smaller well, size pie you tin. You were talking about the uh, pie, the, the sweet potato pie, right? And I consider those hand pies. Those aren't hand pies. Well, they're the size of your hand, so that's yeah. why I would call I mean, Again, you this is that, semantic. Yeah. She's arguing about this, but, right. but it's really semantic. This is a mini pie. Hand pies and mini pies are different things. That's a medium pie. Hmm. All right, okay. cool. That rolls off the tongue. Everyone always says that. I know, that. yeah. <laughs> Go to the bakery. I don't have that medium pie. Uh, sir, what are you talking about? Are you drunk again? <laughs> yeah. And uh, what is the celebrity that has those uh, pies? Patty LaBelle. Patty they LaBelle. Are delicious. She doesn't do just sweet potato. I think she does other flavors oh, now, she? too. Okay. And yeah. I highly recommend bake 350 in your oven yeah. and then put it in there, warm uh-huh. that baby up. It, it takes it to another level. And you must cook them a little bit more and make them a little more well done because they are kind of undercooked. The, the, no, I, honestly, they both are delicious. They, I love them cold. I love them warm. They're different experiences. Mm-hmm. And if you want... Just, I don't know, a different layer to it. Yeah. Heat that baby up. You know, one thing I've realized here today, you know a lot about pie. I do, <laughs> and that's why I get defensive with Virginia. Yeah. You know, who t- hasn't eaten a pie probably in the last three years. It's been mm. a minute. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, I mean, Virginia, how can you go against this guy? He's putting in the work. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, how many mini pies have you housed lately, Virginia? I just don't, I just don't like the mini lie on that mini pie, because it okay. ain't mini. All right, well, we'll let people sound off. What should it properly be named? Why does it annoy me so much? Is she, is she so against, I don't know. Just, she annoys me. I don't know. She's it's, attacking your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, just, I, she's attacking I, your way of life. I can't. I You're can't, a mini pie guy. I can't really figure out exactly why, yeah. but she's really annoying. Yeah. I'll bring you a mini pie tomorrow. I'll show you what a mini pie looks like. It ain't that. Okay. I can't believe it. I He's hear walking out. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people sounding off on these Publix key lime mini pies. Yeah, somebody saying, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I'm right there with the uh, bird on that. And uh, they say for some reason the mini version tastes better than the regular version. I, I find the same thing with king size candy bars. The king mm. size are great. Uh, in theory, but the re- the smaller ones, the taste is better. Okay. Sometimes the, the smaller ones are better. The ingredients are, mm. I don't know if they just marry well. Is that using a pie crust or is that using a graham cracker crumb crust? That's a great question. It felt like... Um, you ate a whole one last night. I believe it's I, It went cracker. down so fast you couldn't tell, Virginia. <laughs> It really did go down pretty fast. It barely hit his tongue. It just went mouth throat. I mean, yeah. you, you asked me that question. I don't know. I'm kind of. I'm kind of. I have to go back in and test it out. Get you some Time more research. Time for another mini pie. <laughs> well, I don't think Denny's is going to eat it, and it's hard to not eat it. Yeah. It looks amazing. So, I just, I don't know. Just sitting right there in front of you. I'm having a tough time getting this whole thing going. <laughs> well, uh, people are debating as well, is that truly a mini pie? I, I'm just eyeballing and guessing I'd say five to six inches uh, circumference would be my guess. Does that seem about right to you, Denny's? Yeah, I'm looking at the radius. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the correct radius, Kevin. All right. <laughs> pie to crust numbers are spectacular because, I mean, it's all about the crust, Well, right? if, you, if you take the circumference, Denny's, and then you times it 3.14. That's true pie right there. It truly needs to be 3.14. It is. I I would do anything to see Kevin have a bite of that. (laughs) Anything? 
Anything. Anything. Okay, Kevin, here's your chance. Name your price. Okay. She's I, ready. He was still wouldn't do it. That's how much he won't have the pie. Uh, He's like, no, nah, I'm not going to have the pie. Damn. There is uh, some debate about the uh, size of pies and what you name them. Uh, one text said, uh, many pies are the size of a cupcake. Thank you. That's what one person hmm. says. They fit in the palm of your hand, not the whole circumference of your hand. Okay. Just the this palm. Is, this is the debate. Uh, again, this is one of those things. It's, it's going to be semantics. Mm, yeah. I, mean, I get the fact that this is bigger than a regular mini pie, but nobody calls it well, a medium pie. When you come on the radio and you say, I ate a mini pie, nobody's like, oh, he went nuts. They're all just like, oh, actually, he's being conservative. He's watching what he eats. Mm. That is a mini pie. Somebody uh, said we've always called those non mini pies half pies. That's what uh, one person calls them. And Scott in our KBJ TV chat, he said, as a former pastry chef, that is a C seven inch medium pie. A mini pie is three to four inches. That's what he says is mm-hmm. a former pastry chef. It's all semantics, Kevin. Yeah, what does right. it smell like? Oh, it's so good. I want to smell that, it. That's one of my favorite public spots. Me too. Right yeah, if I smell it, I'm going to eat half of it. Yeah, that's so just what it is. Smell. It draws oh, you in, right? Oh, it smells I'm good. I'm staying away. It's all oh, yeah. good. I can smell it. Uh, I love the shaved almonds. I don't uh, want to get that thing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I guess the numbers that really do matter, somebody uh, texted in. They said, Google says the Publix mini key lime pie is over 3,000 calories. There's, <gasps> There's no, no way. way. There's no way that's 3,000 calories. Okay. There's no way. I did, yeah, it seems startling to me. The, to they're probably, it's it's got to be the big pie. The big pie. And even the big pie thinks like 1250 or something. That one looks like it's 3,000 calories, though. That, it's very decadent. It's decadent. You think this is 3,000 calories? I kind of do. Let's look it up. I, I don't think that one's 3,000. I mean, 3,000? No. Uh, there's most meals no. aren't 3,000. There's no way. 450 calories, 26% total fat, uh, t- 20 grams of fat in it. Saturated fat is 15 grams. So mm-hmm. that's what you're looking at. So I said, and that might even be just half serving. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you're looking at the mini mango key lime pie from Publix, that's 390 calories. So, yeah, so that's off. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's that's pretty. That's, that's why a, this one's a good one. It's just a good snack. That's, that's why you go mini pie. <laughs> that's why you eat the mini it's pie. It's practically like eating a salad. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> it's super delicious. There you go. People fighting online, losing their minds. So we read the crazy crap they write and have a fun time. Well, get ready for this week's digital drama. Well, fun little social media fights we got here. Thank you for doing the screenshotting and sending it to us. Mail at kbjshow.com. We got one with Corbin. He's mad because his neighbor's got a loud, annoying parakeet, and it's leading to a big old fight here. I will play the role of Corbin. We got uh, Virginia playing the role of Luke Bird. You can be Uma and Denny's. You got two roles here. You got to be Ooh. Ed and Ronnie. Oh. oh. My goodness, huh? It's a lot of weight to lift. Yeah, it is. Last week's performance must have resonated. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. Kevin's, Cat, casting department took note here. Yes. Kevin's been talking about yeah. it all week. Every time, every time you leave the studio, Kevin goes, man, Denny's acting is really getting better. Yeah. 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 The work that Denny's? Oh, yeah. What that Denny's? He does. You, you tell your take it, your lessons are paying off. Yeah. yeah. Here's what uh, Corbin had to say. I'm going to shoot my neighbor's parakeet if it doesn't shut the F up. This bird is making me lose my F in mind. Is that the kind of parakeet that talks? Those things never stop taking dumps. Reminds me of my wife. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> damn. Hey, it's not cool to talk about suiting someone's pet. As an active member of the PETA organization, I'm deeply offended by your comments. That parakeet is somebody's child. Please, take this post down now. Yo, it's a joke, Luke. <laughs> stop telling me what I can and can't post. Man up and stop sounding like a little bitch, yo. That parakeet needs to drop dead. <laughs> Anybody who jokes about killing a parakeet belongs in prison or in hell. Thank you, Uma, for speaking up and being the voice that parakeets need. Thank you for taking and stepping over my line, Virginia. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't done talking, by the way. Um, Parakeets are (laughs) an endangered species. Even joking about it is too far. (laughs) Sorry. We need more Umas in this world and less Corbins. I live next to Corbin, and that god-awful parakeet needs to die. Corbin is 100% right. That parakeet needs to meet its maker. It talks all through the night, and it keeps calling out for Anita. 
<laughs> yeah, Ronnie, I hear the parakeet constantly saying, where's Anita, where's Anita? It's driving me nuts. I can't take it anymore. Anyone on this thread who talks about harming the parakeet in any way, just know you've been reported. Parakeets are an endangered species for a reason. You'll be hearing from PETA very, very soon. No, oh, are parakeets an endangered species? I, I did not know that. Don't uh, we gotta get the research? Sewage, can you research that? <laughs> are parakeets endangered? That's, that's new to me. Huh? <laughs> well, there's an abundance of parakeets. Well, I was like going in the store, they're all over the place. Uma's trying to be a protector. She's I hear you. Okay. All right, got uh, another post here. This is uh, with uh, Chris posting up that he's got a broken air conditioner in his car. The AC is out. So he's going on social media to ask for some financial help, and it turns into a fight with his former lover because he's, again, crushing it. (laughs) Danny is going to play the role of Chris here. Big D. We know stars around here when we see them. I'll play the role of James. We'll have uh, Virginia in here. Let me see. Is Virginia getting a roll? No, I think Virginia got cut. Oh, Big oh, V? Good. I got to go number two anyway. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eve is going to be played by Bird. Okay. All right, Chris, kicking it off. Well, FML, this sucks. The air conditioning Wait, to wait, my- hold on real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm kind of looking here. and uh, It was a typo. Yeah. I think Virginia's James. Okay. Oh. You- you'll be James. So I don't get to go to the bathroom? No. Oh, no. Okay. Hold it in. Okay, I thought I had so. a break. All right. So Virginia <laughs> is James. I will be April. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Sorry about the stepping on your line there, Denny's. I know it was very rude. Oh, no. This <laughs> to one. disrupt a true actor like that. <laughs> well, we're just kind of working it out here. It's a, it's yeah. a think tank. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Go ahead, Denny's. Chris comes in hot here. Well, FML, this sucks. The air conditioning in my car broke. I've never had enough money to fix it. If you could spare some money, that would be amazing. Here's the link to my GoFundMe page. Uh, maybe if you didn't waste all your money on cigarettes and cam girls, you'd have enough money to get your air fix. Just saying, Chris. Oh, whatever, Eva. You're just butthurt because I ghosted you. Believe me, I had my reasons to ghost your ass. Oh, whatever, Chris. I broke up with you, and you cried like a little bitch in the middle of the St. Lucie Ale House. I remember it vividly because me and my friends were embarrassed for you. Oh, I have to back up Eva on this one. She did break up with you, Chris, in front of everybody, and you did cry like a little girl. But in Chris's defense, he was on Molly. (laughs) Uh, Eva, you suck. Leave Chris alone. You're a liar. You're just upset because you've been an assistant JV cheerleading coach for like the last 10 years, and you're a fat ass. Who ever heard of a roly-poly being a cheerleader coach? (laughs) Uh, If I'm so fat and awful, then why did Chris always want some of my loving? (laughs) The only reason why Chris is out of my life is because I dumped him, not the other way around. Go eat some more food, Eva, and then try and teach young kids how to jump. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, earthquake. It's hilarious seeing a big, dumb elephant trying to do athletics. Damn. Yeah. It's a little cold, man. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Oh, I'm choosing to ignore Eva. I'm not, going, I'm not only going to block her. Uh, I'm not going to block her. I apologize. Only mature children <laughs> block other adults. Thank you to all who donated to my GoFundMe page. If I can get up to $5,000, i will be sitting pretty. Wow. I don't know if he's going to get two rolls. Damn, next that week. last, it was on the last <laughs> line, too. Yeah. I saw that I was closing. I got bummed out. That's it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always about how you finish, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what they remember, Denny. Yeah. yeah. That's some tough stuff. It's the KVJ. Dirt of the day. It's the KVJ. Dirt of the day. Virginia. Take it away. Because you know we need that dirt of the day. Well, a judge stepped in and gave both sides 45 days to figure it out and negotiate before they have to go to arbitration. NeNe Leakes is suing Andy Cohen, Bravo Television Network, and the company that produces The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She claims that she spoke out about racist behavior. She said she was called the N-word by other castmates. She said that because of her support of the Black Lives Matter movement, that she was forced off the series in the year 2020. And she says she wants to be paid for all the new seasons that she's not a part of, that she at one point was the highest earning housewife in Bravo history. She broke all the records and was a regular for 10 seasons. 
Okay. Dang. All right. She is suing. Mm-hmm. Um, in other news, it uh, looks as though your boy, remember the guy that we were um, talking to through the fence at the uh, baseball game, Bryce Harper? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has to undergo surgery and is expected to miss uh, six weeks of playing because of this whole surgery thing. And mm-hmm. we only hope he feels better quickly because we need more hot guys out there. Yeah, he was hit by a pitch uh, on his hand, and it was a, kind of an interesting exchange, and people love Bryce Harper uh, because uh, the pitcher was saying, I didn't mean to do it because, you know, sometimes there was a huge fight that broke out the other day in a baseball game in Virginia because they were head hunting, they were throwing at people's heads. On purpose? Mike Trout. Yeah, oh. and uh, they said enough's enough, so they just opened up. It turned into a big old street brawl. People were out there with uh, pipes and chairs. Somebody got hit with a sink. <laughs> What? It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, there was some kind of ox running on the field. It yeah. was crazy. Insane. So dramatic. And uh, so when Bryce Harper got hit, that's always kind of a thing. And so the pitcher was like, I didn't mean to do it. And he's like, I know you didn't. So they're yelling back and forth some bro love. And yeah. unfortunately, it did break his finger and his thumb. Baseball's going a little soft. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe know. they need to hit people with that, that fight wasn't soft. No, yeah. that, that, that one fight that, wasn't soft. That was Kevin not is soft. right. <laughs> Nothing soft about that one. And finally here, Wendy Williams says that she is never coming back to her television show or doing any kind of television. She says she wants to do a podcast instead. I mean, we have the clip, but you kind of nailed it. Yeah. I mean, how long is the clip? I, I mean, I think kinda... let's hear it. I want to hear what she has to say. How does she sound? Because she's mm-hmm. battling a bunch of different medical conditions, and we haven't really heard from her at all this whole year. Right. Mm-hmm. Podcast, which, by the way, podcast everyone has. But when you're famous, podcast will make more money for me than doing the Wendy Williams show. So, podcast, what we're going to do podcast will be with a certain person and then we will continue podcast and you know honestly i don't know what podcast is she drops the word <laughs> podcast like a kardashian drops the word like drink every time she, she says podcast. Get, my goodness podcast what podcast we're gonna podcast. do podcast so what are you doing again wendy i'm, I'm confused podcast it's not a podcast it's Podcast. Just podcast. <laughs> podcast. Yeah. She sounds like she's at least yeah. got her abilities back. She may not have her uh, full understanding of what a podcast is. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, she's dealing with, you know, the Graves disease. Uh, now something new that I had never heard that she was dealing with. Lymphedema, which has left her with barely any feeling in her left foot. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, yeah, I guess the podcast will be less physically demanding. And she says she's going to do podcast better than anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. Better than anyone. <laughs> and that's what's going on in your dirt. All righty. It's time for viral audio. So had your kids, had your wife. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, the one thing we've learned after watching Motley Crue roll through South Florida a couple weeks ago with Vince Neil, it's it's not so easy being kind of an 80s era hair band and still keep it together. <laughs> you know, age gets the best of you and it kind of messes with your voice a little bit and definitely messes with your body. And if you keep up the same kind of lifestyle you had in 1989, it's really tough to maintain that past 2009 or 2019 or even longer. I guess Axl Rose kind of showed this off as well. He was struggling through Welcome to the Jungle at a Guns N' Roses show at a festival in Norway earlier this month, and the comments on social media weren't great about his singing. That's kind of rough. Yeah. Does all this song sound like that? Oh. E. <laughs> Oof. Ah. Oh, I got to go back e. and watch that. Oh. Oh, it's, it's rough. Let me tell you. And the crowd is just kind of saying that there's no movement in the crowd. They're just like, uh, did we pay for this? Maybe, maybe <laughs> drop, drop down a key. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah, or just maybe drop out. <laughs> 
be like, hey, man, I, I can't do this anymore, you know? I mean, hey, you don't see Michael Jordan out there trying to dunk a basketball, do you? I mean, it just kind of happens, right? He's very mellow these days. Yeah. And if uh, that's not embarrassing, Kiss kind of trumped Guns N' Roses when they displayed the Australian flag during a show in Vienna, Austria. Oh, no. And if you don't know geography, Australia <laughs> and Austria are not the same country. And their flags are radically different. <laughs> they uh, they also got busted lip syncing the other day. There's a video going around. Yeah, you know, either you lip sync or you sound like... <laughs> Makeup or breakup? We got your emails here. Mail at kbjshow.com. What do you think about this one? Man, oh man. That Supreme Court decision on Friday is screwing everything up, including people's relationships. It says here, I've been with my boyfriend for six months, and it's been one fun, awesome party. We didn't even have our first fight until Friday. When the ruling came down from the Supreme Court on Roe versus Wade, I was so angry and emotional, and I thought that he would be my rock. When I told him what had happened, he just said, well, it's about time. That was not what I was wanting to hear at that moment. So all the anger I have for the Supreme Court was unleashed on him. Needless to say, our weekend plans were ruined, and I left it on Sunday with, I just don't know if I can be with a guy who is pro-life. He told me that he doesn't want our beliefs to end our relationship, and he said he can respect my opinion if I can respect his. I just don't know if I can. Are there relationships that are working with people on opposite sides of this opinion or any other polarizing opinion this strong? Do I give our relationship another chance or just realize there is nothing but more fighting in our future? Okay. There are relationships that do make it where you have strong, polar, opposite opinions on big issues. The matters of the heart issue, and it's hard to stay together, in my opinion, when it comes to matters of the heart issues, if you guys are on polar opposite sides of one another. And especially if you guys both are vocal and strong-willed and want to talk about your position. Yes. You, you, the only way you can make this work is if you decide that you're just not going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. My my mom and dad were on the opposite sides of the political uh, spectrum, and they didn't mm -hmm. really talk about it. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't something that was because they weren't really both into politics that much. They just were. They kind of had their own view, and that was pretty. Mm -hmm. much, it, it never. It never got in the way of the relationship. You said in your first line, you gone six months, and it had been one fun, awesome party until Friday. So for six months, you were able to have an awesome relationship without talking about the decision. And now that it's been front and center, you had really your first big fight. If you can both say, hey, look, we're just going to agree to disagree and you can put that behind you and you're not going to flaunt it in each other's faces and you can move on and still respect their opinion and keep yours. I think you can stay together. But I, I do think it's tough when it's matters of the heart and you really, because matters of the heart are issues you really believe are right, whatever that is. Yeah. And that's going to be tough to get through because yeah. people people aren't quiet about matters of the heart issues. That's that's the time when people do speak up you've gotta, and things get emotional. You've got to love your person more than you love being right. Yeah. The only warning I do put out is I think that this is the beginning of a big political fight that will be happening across America and in different states. And Florida, there's going to be some level of a fight as tomorrow the uh, deadline for an abortion drops from 24 weeks down to 15. And so there are people that are already challenging that decision. And so if you are an advocate and you're going to be front and center and he's an advocate, and he's going to be front and center fighting on the other side. I don't think he's going to work. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And if you have that kind of a situation, I don't I don't see how it could work. Yeah. That'd be tiring, too. It would. It would. But if you can kind of park and it's not a front and center discussion you have every single day, your relationship's going to be fine. If not, then, yeah, you guys are done. All right. Another email here says make up or break up. He sent bikini photos of my sister to his friends. 
It says, my sister was in town last weekend from Atlanta, and we spent some time together paddleboarding with my boyfriend. We then went back to my parents' house and hung out at their pool and tiki bar for the rest of the day. His phone was on the bar when I saw a text pop up that had some graphic language in it about some sexual activities to a girl that I know you can't say on the radio. It was so startling that I asked my boyfriend, who's that text from? Well, he whipped his head around in a panic from the conversation he was having with my sister. He said it was nothing, and he tried to put his phone away. Admittedly, I was strongly buzzed, and I laid into him until he showed me that text thread. It was from one of his friends, and the girl he was talking about was my sister. And then as I looked at the thread, I noticed there were actually three other guys on the thread. The thread started with a photo of my sister on her paddleboard earlier in the day in her bikini with the text saying, So, how hot is my girlfriend's sister? There were many tasteless comments and four more bikini photos throughout the course of the day. My boyfriend said he was just trying to play matchmaker for his friends. I told him it was tasteless. We fought. I never told my sister about it. My boyfriend has been very apologetic and said he was not the one making the inappropriate comments. He also blamed his bad judgment on the alcohol he'd been drinking all day. We've been together for seven months, and normally he is really awesome. Could you forgive this? Yeah, I think I could forgive it. I mean, you have to really say, look, dude, this is family. We don't set up family to be talked about like this on social media. It's just not cool. If you want to set her up with maybe some of your friends, do that privately. Don't put her out there like a piece of meat. She's my sister. Yeah, Wallace Pennington's heard enough. I'm definitely out. Out on that. Yeah, you're a pig. Yeah, obviously he finds the sister very attractive or he wouldn't pass it off to his it's, buddies. They're so it's, it's so layered with annoying stuff. Yeah, A, he thinks your sister's hot and he wants to get with her. And he's got a text threat. And he's taking pictures of her without her knowing, too. And but, then throughout the day, he was taking more pictures and posting those. Like, it's just like, well, all right. He's, he's texting them. Yeah, it's Look, not going on social. For me, I wouldn't jive like that. I'd be, I would be upset about that because you don't think that's going down. And I don't like little secrets and pictures being taken and threads going on that ain't, that ain't my cup of soda i I'm, I'm actually out on this one but you'll get some kind of email birds a bitch mm -hmm. it, it to me it's it's a character issue there's the, no respect in there and that would be my concern is where's your level of respect for for women i you know look you can look with your eyes and be like yeah she looks really good and she's really hot but you then creepily taking four photos throughout the course of the day sending it to your friends and there is a text thread that is going on with a lot of uh crass comments I mean, AJ in the chat room says he's just trying to be a good wingman. I, I hear you. You're going to get some people who think that. Yeah, you know, and he's trying to say all I did was take a photo and I sent. I said, hey, how hot is my girlfriend's sister? And then that started, you know, it's, it's chum to the sharks. And they go I mean, after it. You're, 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 in the, you're in the realm of slimy. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. You're slimy adjacent. You've got a little slime on you. Yeah. Um, Penelope says a lot of guys do stuff like this. Not all of them are stupid enough to get caught. <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, and, and where he really got dumb, he got careless. Later in the day, his phone sitting on the bar. Drinking. Boom, it pops up, and she looks over, his girlfriend looks over and reads, wait, that's what? filthy. Like, what is going on here? But what is this comment about? Girls do this, too, now. <laughs> girls do this, You're right. too. Yeah, I mean, it, we flipped it around. A, this ain't just a guy thing. You could see a girl doing this of be course. like, isn't my boyfriend's brother so hot? And then girl's like, saying equally as crass oh comments back and forth Look, in a text thread. So you dump that girl. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I think it just it's more about how he's talking about how, how hot the sister is. Okay. Heather says he's not slimy. He's adjacent slimy. Well, I mean, I'm saying you're, you're in, the, you're in the, the arena of you're in the, the arena of where don't be surprised when drama happens. You're in that arena of you're doing stuff that's going to get because I can see people doing that and then being shocked. Why are you so mad about this? Well, it's her sister, okay? If you're dating her, you should look at that sister like you would look at your own sister and respect her and not want her to be a piece of meat for your goofy friends while you're drinking. Like, it just feels like something you would never do to your own sister. So why would you do it to your girlfriend's sister? Okay. Uh, that feels like one I can uh, have suits put up at KBJ TV poll because I am kind of curious where people would fall on that. Your boyfriend takes bikini photos of your sister and starts a tasteless thread with his friends. Is that a makeup or a breakup? Uh, we'll see what the KBJ TV has to say on that one. And another email here 
It says make up or break up. He has a business with his ex. It says for the first time ever, I find myself in a relationship with a guy who is divorced. But my situation is even more unique because my boyfriend owns a bar with his ex. They are successful, but not successful enough that he doesn't still have to work a lot, especially on the weekends. There are a lot of late nights, even on the weekend. Plus, he and his wife have had a cordial breakup and they don't avoid each other much at work. I hate being insecure about this and I know that I need to trust him, but it's hard. Plus, I heard you guys talking once about how high infidelity is in the bar and restaurant business. <laughs> So not only could he cheat with his ex, but he could also be cheating with some other random. Am I dumb for being in this relationship? It's been four months and everything has been awesome. I just know that I am falling hard for this guy. And if it's going to end, I'd rather it happen before the love stage. Are you in or out? I'm out. Walls out? Well, because there, you're, there's, there's just, it's already <laughs> starting off with drama. There's already little things that, cause you're already insecure. There's an ex involved. They own a bar. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a lot for the beginning. Walls has left the building. Walls I, I guess is out. I, I don't know. Maybe it, it's me, right? It, it's, maybe it's me. It's too early in this relationship. What she say? Four months. Four months. And you can't be telling him to get rid of his business with his ex-wife. Oh, he's not. She's not. That's not at all what her point is. Her point is she knows that. Yeah. He's locked into this. It's just I'm here at the threshold of love. I'm four months in. I'm really falling hard for this guy, and he owns a bar restaurant with his ex-wife they're there a lot plus there's just other random girls that are always coming in should i before i get too emotionally entwined with this guy bail out on it now he's she's never dated a guy that's been divorced especially a guy that has a business with his ex-wife we always bring our own experiences into these things you know what i'm saying so if, if you got a point of view it's probably because you've been through it before and i just know in the past anytime i've gotten involved with somebody and there's still the ex lingering around and i i'm not talking about where there's a kid involved because I, I get how the ex would have to be involved. But when the ex is just around a lot, it doesn't usually end great. In my personal experience, it's, it's a it's challenge. Always There's always yeah. an extra level of drama. It's a challenge, and I don't know this guy. This guy could be a really great, decent, upstanding guy that just owns a bar, and he's divorced, and his ex-wife is the part owner. So he still could be really awesome. And if you got a really awesome guy just because he co-owns a bar with his ex-wife and he's in the restaurant biz doesn't mean that infidelity is in his future. You don't have to blow this thing up yet because, yeah, there's a lot of things that you're going to be like, oh, looking sideways and, and sniffing around about. But he hasn't given you any reason to break up with him. No. Why would you break up with him when you don't even know if it's going to work out or not? Well, unless the ex, unless there's some kind of a weird thing with the ex still going on. And she says there's not. No. And so just, it's silly to break up and make trouble before there is trouble. Like, stop being right. dramatic. Calm down. Have fun with this guy. Enjoy the free drinks, which that's mm. awesome. Well, just think about how it would sound if she sat down to break up with him. And he's like, <laughs> why are you breaking up with me? She's like, well, you own a, a bar with your ex-wife and there are other girls that you could uh, sleep with. There's other girls you could sleep with at Publix. Right. <laughs> like, His response would be like, wait, what? what? I'm, I'm getting dumped because of this? You're insane and you're making trouble where there is no trouble yet. Yeah, I just agree. Just keep an eye on the yeah. situation. Have fun. Yeah. Fun, enjoy yep. dating a guy who owns a bar and loosen up. I think it's a breakup only because I think she, look, man, you got to have a certain temperament to uh, date somebody that's in the bar business. And if you're going to be insecure about this so early, I don't know if it's going to be the right situation for you. The bar and then mm. the ex, and you're already worried emailing a radio station. I, I think you might be too insecure for the relationship. Well, you're the problem. Just what? look at yourself and just know that you're the problem because he hasn't done anything wrong for him to no. be broken up with. You are making this a dramatic, insecure situation because you are the problem. And right. that's why I, I think they should break up. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, just strap on your security and stay in the relationship. That's my thought. It's a good life lesson. Good little exercise for you.
We have helped. better self-esteem. We helped no one, Kevin. <laughs> I feel like I helped. No, I'm just I feel like, I feel uh, like we cut through it. I feel I'm like kidding. I am always so spot on. This is an interesting one, though, too. We had the KBJ TV poll. Your boyfriend takes bikini photos of your sister and starts a text thread with his friends. Do you make up or break up? 84% are saying break up. Wow. Yeah. But that's kind of our chat room. So It was a text yeah. thread, too. I thought at first yeah. when you read it, I thought it was a social media post. No. It was a text thread. Text that's thread. different. Yeah. Because a lot of guys... Guys do have this. I know Panda has this with some of his uh, squirrely buddies. They have text threads going with very inappropriate stuff on it. But it's not meant for me to look at. So I don't look at it because I don't care to look at it. But just know that guys do this and it's not necessarily like him trying to come for your sister and make her look horrible. How does it make it better if it's social media compared to, I don't get it. Because social media is for everyone to see and a text thread is only a few guys on it. It's a private thing where social media is public. If you put those photos up on social media... And they go and public with it's even worse, yeah. I think. What are you talking oh, about? definitely and worse. have her permission? Definitely worse. All right. But I'm just saying, I know Panda is very respectful, and he's got tasteless threads with his buddies. Okay. <laughs> it happens. I <laughs> one of his buddies. I don't have any with him. Whatever. I don't. I do not. I don't. They take the ones I get or be the ones you send me of his dong, which you have done before. That's <laughs> <laughs> what wives are for. Uh, Panda doing the helicopter. I'm like, oh, oh I don't want to see this. <laughs> All right, time for another battle of the generations. The millennials have tied it up with Gen Z. 26 wins apiece. They can actually move into the lead if they can whoop up on Jaybird's Gen X group here today. Oh, people unite! Yes, <laughs> that's what we're going to find out here. For our millennials, we've got Leo from Coral Springs. What's going on, Leo? Hi, the guys. Let's get him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dang. Fire. Uh, yeah. Leo Fire Roar. Yeah. Roar. All right. Very nice. And we've also <laughs> got for our Gen Xers here today from Port St. Lucie, it is Cindy. Hello, Cindy. Hi. Good morning. Ah, oh, Cindy, you know I love the pizzle. Love Port St. Lucie. Y'all my people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from Jersey, but I'm in PSO now, so we'll go with that. Okay, because I don't like New Jersey. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> this changes everything. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, here's how we play the game. You guys have a generational partner for millennials. It's Denny's for Gen X. It is Jaber. We start with the person that is on the phone. When I ask you a question, you have three seconds to answer. If you can do a correct answer in that time, you get two points. If it goes to your generational partner, you get one. They get it correct. We're going to start off with the millennials and Leo here. Your first question, Leo. Tom Cruise jumped on Oprah's couch because he was so in love with this woman. Oh, I, I know her. Um, oh, no, oh, okay. All right. Timed out on that. Uh, Denny, you got a guess? Is it Katie Holmes? It is Katie Holmes. Oh, I'm so in love. <laughs> Me and Denny's. We've watched that millions. We've watched that interview a lot. Millions of times. <laughs> Couldn't believe it, Virginia. It's pretty amazing. It, it is. It still holds up. Talk about not being self-aware. It's a whole hour. It's the whole show. It's insanity. It's dude. Mm. What are you thinking? Okay, we're going to go over to uh, Cindy in Port St. Lucie for your question. Your question, Cindy, who did Patrick serenade with can't take my eyes off of you in the movie 10 Things I Hate About You? Julia Stiles? Um, Do you need the, the actor name? Yeah, give me the uh, character name real quick. I'm going to give you the two points if you can. Me or her? Uh, Cindy, do you have the uh, character's name? Uh, no, I don't know her name. <laughs> Jaybird? Cat? Cat? Cat, yeah. Okay, I'll give you a point for that one. Okay, it is Cat, but yeah. So, tag team, you got it all right. 
Good for a point. So, okay, one point. One point because you answered it. You you wanted the character name guy. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. all right, all right. Well, Ralston, he, he runs. Look, he's a tough judge. He, he runs a tough classroom. <laughs> he's the Simon Cowell of this operation. Yeah. Step no, it up, Paula. Make no mistake about that. You are the Simon Cowell. <laughs> yeah. Virginia. Yeah, he's way too nice to be Simon Cowell. You're Paula Abdul. <laughs> no, you're Simon and Paula. You have the drunkenness addiction and the jerkiness. <laughs> oh, I'll man. wrap them into one. <laughs> So you kind of get two for one. I'm Randy, dog. I'm Randy. <laughs> okay, it's tied at one apiece in the Battle of the Generations as we go back to the Millennials. And Leo, your next question. Leo, what was the name of the popular boots that were a staple of the grunge movement in the 1990s? Looking for the brand name, Leo. Oh, the brand name. Um, uh, okay. Denny's. Is it Doc Martens? It is Doc oh, Martens. The, the Waffle Stompers? Yeah, Doc Martens, them grunge boots. Uh, Denny's was extreme back in the I day. was pretty extreme. He's I extreme was... today. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was a big grunge guy. He's a punk band. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. It is a two to one. The Millennials are leading Gen X right now as we go back to Cindy here. This could be worth two points if you get it three seconds. Cindy, what hair accessory... Do tweens exchange and wear on their wrist to signify that they are in a relationship? A scrunchie. That is correct. Wow. Wow. What a tough question. Oh, that is a big answer there. That wow. puts Gen X in the lead now, three to two. Big time. I okay. love a scrunchie, too. It's way more easier on the hair than a regular rubber band. You know it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Back to Leo, the Millennials. Leo. All right. Let's try this. All right. Tell me this. What is the name of the character that Olivia Rodrigo plays in the high school musical TV series? I even take a first. Oh, no. I don't watch Disney. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, <laughs> That's got to be relatively right. recent. It is. It is. It is uh, ridiculous. It's, a, it's one that your uh, Gen Z should uh, be able to jump all over. That's why it's a millennial uh, question. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll say right. Jennifer. Jennifer is a <clears throat> solid guess. It's Nina. Nina <gasps> Salazar Roberts. Oh. Yes, I'm sure Salazar. if Gen Z were awake right now, they would know that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back here to Cindy. With uh, Gen X, this could be a big point that could slam the door. Oh, oh, scrunchy. Okay. All right, here we go, Cindy. Your question. You can slam the door shut on this if you get a two-pointer. Which Bachelor Nation and FAU alum was Gigi Hadid rumored to date in 2019? <sighs> Uh, I have no idea. Sorry, no idea. That's okay. Bird. It won't end the game, but it would uh, increase the lead. Cameron. His name's Cameron. Good old Cam. Cameron. Cameron. Do you need a last name? Do I have to give it? Can't Cameron. Do I need a last name? Cameron Diaz. <laughs> Cameron Tompkins. No, it doesn't feel right. Cameron Tompkins. K K Cam. Cam. Cam, Cam, Newton? Cameroon. Cam Newton? Uh, Cameroons? Is it the guy that Virginia's always <sighs> making feel uncomfortable? <laughs> yes. What is his name? He gave us a great yogurt. <laughs> oh, what's his name? He did give us great smoothies. <clears throat> Tyler. Tyler! Cameron. Tyler Cameron. Cameron. I got his last name. Hmm. Can't, that doesn't count? You called him Cam Cameron. <laughs> Cameron doesn't count? Right. If he hadn't given you great yogurts. He gave you smoothies. He was in here. Cameron. I, all right. We're not, if you hadn't met him, I wouldn't be so tough. <laughs> not taking a last name. So I like, hope he's not listening. Actually, right. you gave me the last name. You didn't give me the first name. I'm saying Tim, not taking a last name. No, not on that. I'm no, embarrassed. I first and last name on that one. Uh, yeah, that's the rules, Bird. Sorry, no points. No points for Gen X. We're sorry, Tyler. We love you. Yeah, some of us do. I love them. I, I, I love the, the smoothie. Is great. <laughs> okay, all right. Here we go. What do you think about this, Leo? This could be big for the millennials. Your question: What rapper? 
sampled Fergie's Glamorous for his hit single, First Class. White rapper. White rapper. Uh, JC. What is it? Did he say JC? JC. Okay. JC. Oh, JC. Okay. Denny's, do you know this for a point? Oh, okay. Uh, white rapper, I mean, geez, I don't know. I'm going to say Post Malone. Post Malone. That is incorrect. It's Jack Harlow. Oh. Is his name. All I hear is the witch <laughs> huffing and puffing. Huff. Uh, 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 you're not uh, getting any of the good ones right. Uh, <laughs> You've insulted Jack Harlow and Tyler Cameron it, back to back. It's so easy just to sit there and huff and puff. Uh, That's all you hear. Uh, you're an embarrassment. Uh, Okay, Gen X wins with any point here. <laughs> any point. Any point <laughs> at all, Gen X is going to get the win. I'll take anything, Kevin please, says. Please, please. End this. Okay. All right, here we go, Cindy, back to you. What is the name of the challenge that went viral as people were standing still to the song Black Beatles by Ray Schremmerd in 2016? Had a whole social media challenge. What was the name of the um, challenge as people stood still? It was called. Oh, oh I can't think of the name of it. I know what it is, and then they would start dancing. Um, I think I got it. I don't. Bird, I this, can't remember the name. I'm sorry, okay. Bird. Bird, I think. Okay, Bird. Is this for the win? This is for the win. Oh, <laughs> this is for the win. It's all on you, Cupcake. Don't blow it. This one's from a boy, Cameron. Mini-pie. Cameron, Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called the. Mannequin challenge. It is the mannequin oh, challenge. Oh, oh, Brings a win got home for his generation. <laughs> Gen X shocks Whew. the millennials today. Oh, you did it. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. On a recent question, too. Dang. More recent. Yeah. What it's a only rocky six years moment. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> impressive stuff. Oh, well, thank you very much, wow. Cindy. Congratulations, oh, wow. and Leo for the millennials. <laughs> Appreciate you guys playing today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love the show. All right, thank you. Love you. That was so exciting. All right, very nice. So that means that the uh, Gen Xers are trying to climb back in it. You got 18 wins. Bird, you're only eight behind. Okay. All right. right. That's a lot better than nine. Yes. All right. (laughs) Ow! There's a lot of dumbass criminals to talk about, baby. It's the Whacked Out News. People breaking the law. Ha ha, fighting in the nude. Ha, drunk people pooping in the street. Ha ha, it's the whacked out news. So many people are meth. Ow! Well, this was a big problem in South Florida during the pandemic. People were going on Airbnb and they're ranching out, renting out really nice houses and then throwing ragers. Remember that in uh, Miami Day? They couldn't yeah. shut that one party house down. Well, it was kind of a side hustle, which yeah. you got to kind of respect on a certain level. I mean, I don't want to see damage come to the property, but these kids were getting their older siblings to rent the house under their name, and then they were charging admission and yeah. providing alcohol for minors, but they were charging like 50, 75 bucks a head, and then they would have like 100 kids show up, and they mm. were making bank. Yeah, I they mean, were. Yeah. It's highly illegal to give alcohol to minors, but on some level, I do respect the hustle. Yeah, and at the time, all the other nightclubs were shut down because right. of the pandemic, so right. it was it working was, out. It was very opportunity driven. Well, during that era, Airbnb banned parties because of the situation like what was going on in Miami, and now they just made it permanent. The ban is going to stick, and you no longer can uh, throw any kind of ragers in somebody's Airbnb. What's a rager? I mean, like, where do you cut it off? Like, can mm. you have, can you rent one of those big mansions with yeah. 10 bedrooms mm. and invite 30 people? I, I would think, ass- I would assume the second you get a noise complaint, that's when you're going to have a problem. And what they're going to do then is if you get a noise complaint because it's too loud at a place, I think what Airbnb is going to do, they will throw you off the app and block you. Because I think you could have a rager with 15 people if they do it right. You absolutely could. (laughs) And then you just charge more of a premium to each of those underage persons. You charge maybe... $30 
$300 to come to this rager and you only invite 30 kids and you can still make a lot of money and then when they kick you off the app you just sign under a different name. Now, can, Ooh, you kick me off the app. Ooh. You bring up a good question though. When does it become a rager? If you have five people, is that a rager or is that just five people going crazy? Well, I've got mm. noise complaints and it's just been me <laughs> at my house. Right, exactly. Like yeah. noise complaints yeah. can happen yeah. very quickly with a party of one and a little bit of wine. But can you throw a rager for yourself? Well, you can be an out-of-control alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's all yeah. about, if, if Kevin is basing it on noise complaints, uh-huh. I've absolutely gotten a noise complaint when there hasn't been a rager going on. I yeah. guess my question is, what de- what defines what a rager is? I would say it's probably a formula of noise complaints that the police have to call or damage that's done to the property. And if they look at that and say, okay, you went a little too crazy and you're going to get the boot. I assume they do that anyway. They say last year alone, over 6,600 guests were suspended by Airbnb for violating the party ban. Ooh, suspend Mm. me. I'll go open a new account under a different name. Like, really? Mm -hmm. You're not going to stop it by the threat of suspending your account. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. People are going to still throw parties with this. And there's a way to research on Airbnbs if the owner lives out of town or in town. Okay. Because a lot of the Airbnb bees I've stayed in, Mm -hmm. the owner lives out of town. So they're not going to come shut your party down. They don't even live there. When's the last time a Kevin Rawson's been to what he would call a rager? A rager? Oh, it's years. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been to parties. I don't know. Uh, Rager. It's been a minute. I mean, since it was like out of control. Yeah, the first vanilla ice house party. (laughs) Yeah, probably. (laughs) Yeah, where it's just it's nighttime and it's just out of control. It is lawless. Yeah, that one was worth the lawsuit because we didn't have to pay. (laughs) It was. Uh, It was a great time. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, there's a story that uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is doing so badly that they're cutting off the AC to save money. What? Their corporate's denying that uh, any store has been instructed to do that, but people have <laughs> noticed a trend going into Bed Bath & Beyond being going, why is it so freaking hot in here? <laughs> so Bed Bath & Beyond hot as balls? Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yes, you're going to need a bath <laughs> when you go in there. Another little scam that's going on here is people are jacking semi-trailers full of meat. Oh, my. The latest one happened in Grand Island, Nebraska, and they think it might be part of a nationwide trend. They had, uh, like, two other ones happen between Friday and Sunday. In fact, in one of them, they went and checked, and the meat was gone, about $232,000 worth of beef. So this was a job they were planning and strategizing for, probably, right? And you should maybe look as an internal inside job situation. Well, I feel like, it, according to the Sopranos, Kevin, when you hit a truck, you kind of know the route, you know what's going on. Sure. You, you know, know what's yeah. on the truck, yeah. you know when it leaves, you know where it's going, you know where to hit it, where you'll be most vulnerable. And, and then we know, because we did this, you can sell meat on the street. People I, will buy it at a bus stop. I wonder what the take is on something like that. You, you rob a meat truck, mm. what are you going to clear? Because you have to sell sell all that meat now? Do you sell it to one distributor or are you selling it, like you're saying, on the street? You probably know three or four guys mm. that can put that meat repackaged in three or four less than scrupulous stores or restaurants or vendors. Well, the tank's got to be big enough to you want, so you want to hit the truck. Well, you got a street value $230,000 of meat. $230,000 of meat? Mm. People would lift a truck for, for yeah. way less meat. Yeah. That's a lot of meat. Mm. That's crazy, man. Now, we got some <laughs> smaller crimes going on here in South Florida. Not really getting you a lot of money and not doing it very well. 34-year-old John Earl Taylor robbed another guy at gunpoint in Northwest Miami-Dade last week because he wouldn't buy him any Wendy's chicken nuggets. I get it. They're great nuggets. I get it. Yeah, so he asked for the chicken nuggets. The guy said no, went into the Wendy's. When he came out, John Earl Taylor approached him with a semi-automatic gun with an extended magazine in it and demanded the victim hand over his gold chain and car key. Guy took off in his uh, car. Taylor took off in the car, but they uh, arrested him the next morning, so he didn't go very far. So next time, just get him the nuggets. Yeah, you're right, I guess. (laughs) A lot less hassle. Yeah. And this is more of a crime of annoyance. I'm sure you guys are big fans of Florida rapper Spot'em Got'em. Oh, yeah. Who? 
Spot him, got him. Never heard of him, Kevin. S P O T E M G O T T E M. That's well, Spot him, got him. You have now. Mm. If he walked in here right now, I would not be able to pick him out of a lineup. No, no. Well, Spot him, got him. He was um, having a good time on a jet ski right out there at the Marine Stadium Basin and apparently performed an S type turn near some anchored boats. Uh oh. Water Patrol out there saw that and said, You can't be doing that, Spot him, got him. So they spotted him, but and got they couldn't him. get him. Oh, Actually, they couldn't no, get him. No, he took off. Wow. Now you've got a high-speed jet ski chase that's going on, swerving through boats, and they're getting right next to swimmers. That's a big problem here. Ooh. They got their lights on, sirens are blaring. But again, old spot him, got him, took off. And finally, it took them a while, and they had to bring in more backup crews to uh, finally corner them. Now, Spot Em Got Em's facing charges of eluding a law enforcement officer in reckless operation. Damn. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, though. I mean, he, he they probably had to call in a big boat, a speedboat, and say, all right, you're done. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, was, he was getting a little too squirrely out there. Well, uh, a couple other interesting stories here. I know... Um, Some of you guys have tried the plant-based chicken before. I have a lot. And they say now that it's actually kind of tough and deceiving. It's almost like the edibles are with weed looking like regular candy because 20% of Americans, they say, have accidentally bought plant-based chicken. And now they're calling for clear product labeling because they say it's confusing and they think they're buying real meat, but they're actually buying the plant-based stuff. I did a little taste huh. test with somebody who said they would not be able to tell the difference between the chicken and the regular, mm. and they could, they got it wrong. Mm. Some, some of the some. plant-based mm. chicken, yeah. they've gone, they, they, they figured it out. It tastes a lot like it. Now, you'll get people mm. saying that there's no way. Yeah. They've gone pretty good, man. Some of the stuff they haven't. Chicken, I feel like they've they've zoned in on that one the best. Okay. Still needs some work on the cheese. Yeah, it's, it's amazing what they're able to do. They can get plants to taste like chicken, and they can get plants to taste like human flesh. <laughs> Did you see this story? There is a Swedish company that uh, has created a new vegan burger that claims to taste like human flesh. Because what? don't we all crave the delicious taste of human flesh? Why would you want that? I don't understand where the need is for this product, but it's made of soya, mushrooms, and wheat protein, as well as plant-based fats. It's a a small niche market that wants to eat human. Right. Are you a cannibal? (laughs) Or is it Virginia? Oh, bird. People don't talk about this at the cocktail parties. Don't tell me you love murder and cannibalism. No, that'd be very concerning. Do not not get that out there. It would be too much for me. They say the secret is a mysterious spice mix that they add to their new vegan burger to taste get it to taste just like humans. So. How do they, uh, the person you're sitting down to figure out the ingredients and to get the taste oh just right, I'd look into their past. Yeah, how do they know what human tastes like <laughs> to mimic? Clearly the CEO's a cannibal. Yeah, what's going on there? Yeah. Nail it. These well, people are a mess. Who's your expert on taste on that situation? I've had some good human in my days, but this... This is well, right on. If you're going to be that good, that means you've had a lot of experience with human. Yeah, you're right. It's very concerning. So who's going to buy this? Is the company going to be in business in six weeks? I hope not. All right. Can we figure out who the liar is here today? Two truths and a lie. Virginia, we got to hear stories from Jaybird, Denny's, and Suits and see if we can pick up their sketchy behavior to figure out if they're lying or not. I'm the most terrible at this game ever. <laughs> yeah, you kind of are. <laughs> You're not good, but that's okay. But today's your week. I get wrapped up in the story and that y'all just trick me. Today's the day. All right. Now let's see what we got here. Suits is going to start us off with his little story. Is it truth or a lie? What you got for us today, Suits? So I don't know if you guys know this, but when I eat or drink something I don't like, I tend to have a pretty strong reaction to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, in case that. you haven't noticed. Gag. Uh, yeah, and you can only imagine how much worse that was when I was a little bit younger. I mean, it's improved a lot, and that's saying something kind of scary. Um, so we were having a Thanksgiving dinner, and back when we were younger, my mom would always have the big Thanksgiving. She made everything for really every holiday, and the kitchen was like Grand Central Station the morning of Thanksgiving because she was cooking everything. Well, I had left my cup of water sitting in the kitchen, so I went to grab it, but... It wasn't water. It was a Sprite. And for me, that was terrible. I hated soda. My whole life, I hated drinking soda. Even to this day, I don't like soda. Wow. So I took a sip of it, and I was so just taken aback by how the carbonation and everything tasted, I just immediately spit it out everywhere. 
Problem was, I was standing in front of the turkey. Oh. I spit the soda all over it. We didn't have a turkey that Thanksgiving. Oh. I mean, I destroyed oh, the turkey. My family still eats it. I, yeah, I would still eat a Sprite turkey. Well, if I hadn't drank it first and then spit it on the turkey, it'd probably be different. <laughs> but yeah, I just like a spit take right over the turkey, and we ended up having to do it without. Oh. Wow. Okay. Suits ruined Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. It was a tough one. Okay. All right, Bird, what story you got for us here today? So back in the day before I did radio, you guys know I was a baseball instructor. But when I first got into it, it was pretty overwhelming because it was out in the heat. It was a lot of kids, especially the first school that I was a, an instructor for. Mm -hmm. And it was probably about week three. And they put me on bus duty. And bus duty was a big deal. You were in charge of all of the kids. You had to make sure you were at the stop at the right time. You had to make sure they were all counted for. And it was, it was the end of the week. I was pretty much, it was, on, it was a Thursday, end of the week was on a Friday, it was the last day of camp for that week, so it was the end of Thursday, I'm getting all the kids on the, on the bus, and there was this one teenage kid, he was about 14 years old, and he was kind of being a jerk to the other kids, he was talking back to me, and I was so burned out, and just over the kids, I heard him say something to another little kid, and I go, hey, you need to shut the F up. And I said, <laughs> I actually said the, the F word, and the whole bus that was full of about 45 to 50 kids go, ooh, and the, the teenager looked shocked that I said it, and I was also on the bus with another instructor, and he reprimanded me in front of the whole bus. Goes, you can't say that to kids, man. Stop doing that. So it became really, really awkward. I then had to apologize to the teenager, and the next day at work, the boss calls me into the office. Ooh. And now keep in mind, only one kid has to roll over on me. One. Mm. Not one kid rolled over on me, and the boss called me in to give me a promotion, said I was doing a great job, and made me the bus the main bus person for the rest of the summer, which was more money. Nobody said I told the kid to shut the F up. Damn. <laughs> I know. No one said anything about the coach yelling at me. You got lucky. I know. And then that, that if that did not happen, I never become chicken tender. Wow. How about that? That was the birth of greatness. The path to greatness. Yeah. Just got to tell teenagers to shut the F up. <laughs> well, you in your defense, a lot of teenagers need to shut the F up. It was such a loud one. Mm. Okay, and uh, finally here, two truths and a lie. Let's hear what you got for your story, Denny's. Uh, when I was younger, I liked those uh, airbrush t-shirts, you know, you'd find at vacation spots. If you went down to the Keys, you'd always see a display, some guy selling a bunch of t-shirts. Yeah, in, in my hometown, you knew the dude that got the most ass because he had an airbrush t-shirt. <laughs> that was a chick magnet. He cleaned up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back in the 90s, airbrush t-shirts were all the rage. Oh, yeah. So yeah. my uncle and his girlfriend were going on vacation down to the Keys, and they asked if we wanted any souvenirs. And I go, hey, grab me one of those Florida airbrush t-shirts from the Keys. So like, he did it. I got a cool shirt back. It said the Promised Land, Florida, had a mountain and two arches. And it was like kind of all like a mountain. Yeah, it had a mountain and for two, Florida. And it had two arches, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so I'm wearing it in class, and my French teacher calls me up to the front of class and tells me to turn my shirt inside out and go to office. And I go, What? And I'm looking at my shirt. I'm like, It says Florida Promised Land. What the heck are they so mad about? I get to the office and I show my principal. It was actually a woman laying on her back. And it was airbrushed in a graphic style, but the arches were her legs, and the middle, the mountain, what I thought, was actually her, her tater tots. <laughs> her tater tots. <laughs> but it was all, like, airbrushed to be a design, the promise and land. nobody noticed it except for my French teacher, who made me go to the office, and my parents got called and came in. They're like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's wearing... Sacre bleu! And we all had no idea that this was an offensive shirt. Showing the tater tots. I, just, I love when Denny's talks dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what you're saying. Why are there mountains? Because it wasn't. It was a woman laying on her back. Oh, and that's amazing. I mean, nobody, no one in my family realized it. That so I got class. is awesome. Okay. Gosh, I hope that one's well, real. Well, it said promised land because if you looked at the very bottom middle, there's a guy waving people in to <laughs> where you could guess. <laughs> It does sound like a... It is the promise yeah, land. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that does sound legit. Okay, so which one is the real story? Which one is the fake? Suits did a soda spit take over the Thanksgiving turkey bird gone. Jay Bird was on baseball camp bus duty when he told a teenager to shut the F up, but it got him a promotion the next day. 
And then Denny's wore a perverse airbrush tee from the Keys to school. Okay, I'm uh, buying Denny's. Birds, I think I could uh, see as well. I think Suits is the one that uh, I am most skeptical of here today. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm having a problem with the Sprite on the turkey. Cause and then you chuck it out. I would have still served that. I mean, a lot of work goes into a turkey. And some people even like to baste their meat in soda. Yeah, but that was spit. It's not ideal, but it is your kid. I mean, chances are you've swapped spit with your kid before. I like the I like you working it out. This is good. If I'm you have the a rest kid, of the family's there though. Are you going to want to eat someone other kid's spit? I know, I know, mm. but I agree with Kevin. I think Suits is the liar. Okay, that huh. is the big question we have here today. Hmm. What's the What's the audience thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they're kind of uh, with us because the early polling numbers that uh, we've got has suits at 70% as being the liar. Oh, really? All right. Yeah. What do you have to say for that, Mini Pie? 70%. Jeez, did, did Suits really crap the bed this week? Did uh -oh. Suits blow it and make it too easy, or did he trick us all? We'll find out next. We think we know who the liar is. We think... We think it suits. And the chat room definitely agrees with this as well. The voting is still saying strong for suits. 65% believe he told a lie when he said that he did a soda spit take over the family's Thanksgiving turkey, forcing them to throw the bird out. Now, Jaybird told a story about being on a baseball camp bus. He was in charge, told a teenager to shut the F up, but then got a promotion the next day. In front of a ton of kids, Kevin. <laughs> and then Denny's told us about an airbrushed T-shirt he got from the Keys that was so perverse when he wore it to school the next day, they made him turn it inside out. He didn't realize how dirty it was. Talking about Florida being the promised land, it was actually the promised land of a woman's naked body. Okay. So, are we right? <laughs> Is Suits the big liar here today? Nope. It would be me. I know Virginia almost caught me, too, because I didn't even think about it. Why would Florida have a mountain in it? She said that, and I was like, oh, well, you know, I was, I was just making it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh you made yeah. it up. Yeah, it was kind of slipping. Mm -hmm. wow. The turkey was actually already done. People were already there when I did that, and my mom lost her mind on me. But then really? after, we had a lot of food, too, because we went over the top, and people brought food, and we would do, like, 20-person dinners when we did wow. Thanksgiving. It was huge. How about so that? So there was a lot of food, but we just didn't have a turkey, and it became the running joke after my mom calmed down among the whole family. But, yeah, she would not serve it after I spit all over it. <laughs> I get that. I, huh. I get it. I would have eaten my kid's spit turkey. Oh, the Pennington's. Yeah, we yeah I don't know about Aunt yeah. Leonore. She wouldn't have eaten it, though. Well, okay. screw her. Yeah. She's a little bit too She's stuck not. up. Good job, boys. Good job. Wow. wow. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. You, yeah, did you did good. You did? All right. Oh my <laughs> well, I thought this was kind of crazy. There is a TikTok mom who is just talking about how she's become a grandmother at the age of 37. And listen to this. She has 12 kids. Whoa. And it's so crazy that her granddaughter was born just two months after she delivered her 12th child. Whoa. And her newborn is actually two months younger than her uncle. <laughs> I mean, it throws a lot of chaos in here when she's 37, just welcomed her 12th kid, but yet... She's got another one that's just popped up. And by the way, her oldest child is 17. So I would assume it's the 17-year-old that has had the child. Could you imagine Christmas and you have 12 kids? It'd be insane. <laughs> I mean, just We're going life. to the dollar store and each of you get to pick out two things and that's it. Well, think about it. I mean, she's 37. Could you imagine, Virginia, no. for you 10 years ago, you would be a grandma with a 10-year-old grandchild. Whoa. A 10-year-old grandchild you would have right now that's like in fifth grade. Big, oh, yeah, my grandchild's in fifth grade. That's insane. It is kind of insane. In, in fact, the way it works out, Magnolia would be having a baby right now. I would kick her. Yeah. Huh. How about that? 37. I'm just kind of curious because I do know in my hometown they started a little young as well. It's the country. Yes. There's not a lot to do. It's hard to beat a Logan record. <laughs> But the youngest grandmother I know from my hometown was 27. <gasps> wow. 
27-year-old grandmother. But she was what? There's a term for that. She was still in her prime. <laughs> she was. There's a term. She, she was 13 when she had her first. I think she had three by 16. Whoa. Yeah, that was uh, her whole three. high school career was just pumping out kids. Yeah, three, and, by and so three by 16. Three by 16. Then her oldest had one at 14, and that's why she was 27. 27 year old grandma. That's just unbelievable. Yeah, so she, she, you know, if, if TikTok were around, Logan would trend really hard. That's crazy, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's the youngest grandmother I've ever seen. 27. Can anybody beat that? Can anybody beat TikTok grandma at 37? I'm just kind of curious, who is our youngest grandmother that we have out there? Because I, I think I'm going to hold the record here. I would be surprised if anybody is lower than you. If there is anybody lower than you, it's... It feels like a crime. <laughs> it does. And you know, the, the amazing thing, the girl's last name was Sexton. Wow. Mm, like ton of sex. I'm not even lying. Sexton was her last name. No one thinks you're lying, Kevin. Yeah, this, this, I mean, it's This story sounds quite we, possible. We don't need to lie in Logan. <laughs> Everything is real. Okay, looking for KBJ's youngest grandma. There is a woman on TikTok. She just had her 12th kid. She's now a grandma at the age of 37. Her granddaughter was born two months after she delivered her 12th child, and her oldest child is 17, so I guess it's a 17-year-old that's uh, cranking him out, but it can happen. Had a girl in my class uh, back in my hometown of Logan, Ohio. She was 13 when she had her first. Her daughter had hers at 14, so she was a 27-year-old grandma. Pretty impressive. In your opinion, would a, at least one season of a Netflix show called Logan, could it work? <laughs> oh, no doubt. Yeah, I think it could work. At least when I was there. I can't speak for you know Logan since the 90s, but oh my gosh, yeah. We could make it scripted if stories were told from back in the day. It would, you know, it would be a lot like Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> that's the gig. And it's kind of already been made, just in a different setting. But yeah, that's pretty much my hometown. If you are a grandmother, this is going to be good for you because uh, there's a luxury brand, Balenciaga. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's yeah. very fancy. Yeah. Uh, apparently now they're going to be selling granny panties. So Ooh. if you want to be a trendy granny, you can get uh, your granny panties. And the one thing that uh, I've noticed about Balenciaga, they don't really don't seem to do, like, it's not necessarily high quality stuff. They just put the name on it. And if you put the name on it, that immediately jacks the price up. You're going to get these granny panties. In fact, they look just like regular granny panties from Hanes that are $16 for a 10-pack. These are not $16 for a 10-pack. How much would you pay for Balenciaga granny panties? All it does is put the word on the waistband. Virginia, what do you guess is the retail price? These pants per pair? Uh, yeah, it's per pair. This is one pair. And they're, by the way, uh, they're dry clean only. <gasps> Dry clean. Dry panties. clean only. That's how fancy these granny panties are from Balenciaga. How much do you pay for one pair of granny panties? Well, I don't pay a red cent, but I think that the Balenciaga panties are probably ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. No, way overpriced. Okay, Bird, what do you guess? This is one pair of granny panties from Balenciaga. How much are you going to be paying? $73.50. $73.50. The actual retail price, $225. Virginia is the winner. <laughs> Don't you? $225? $225 for one pair of granny panties that just say Balenciaga. I mean, do not crap yourself, right? <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to crap a $225 pair of underwear. And they're only dry clean? <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're underwear. So you wear them under things. So who really gets to see you and your granny panties? That's ridiculous. And one pair, I mean, after just time, they're not going to be that great, right? <laughs> no, no panties are. They're available in five different colors if you're looking to drop a ton of money. You could spend well over $1,000 for a five-pack of granny panties from Balenciaga at Balenciaga.com. It's stupid. It's yes, so it stupid. Is. Yes, it is. So that's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I don't get it myself, but I guess that's the world of fashion, right? Well, Virginia's friends are telling her that this is the dating app you want to be on and it's not a name you would expect but it's a name you definitely know and a lot of you probably have it now you've heard of all the other ones that are out there the plenty of fishes and whatever bumble they, tinder bumble, uh, tinder is you, you all know what happens with tinder meat market yes is there really one called meat market probably oh that do well i think <laughs> <laughs> but one name maybe you didn't expect to be great for dating is Facebook. 
you say that they are doing a dating app now or a dating section on Facebook? Yeah, it's called Facebook Dating. I didn't know anything about it, but my girlfriend, who's a single mom, I was talking with her last night, and she's like, yeah, there's so many more options on Facebook Dating. Now, it doesn't match you up with anybody that like you're already friends with, but it will maybe match you up with somebody who you have a friend in common with. But she said there's so many more options. She's been going on more dates, and it's just nice not to have to pay for it. I think it's free. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So that's the other ones you're, you're paying a good chunk of money. So Facebook has jumped into this, and I would imagine if they've got the user base that they do and they're providing it for free, this could very quickly take over the dating app game. It has no paid features or premium upgrades, so everybody's on the even playing field. Yeah. Uh, Facebook users do not have to pay a cent to view profiles, create matches, send messages, and use the dating feature. But who knows when they'll change that now. They could change it to be a a pay site whenever they want. You know how they get you. In the beginning, everything's free, Kevin, even the drug dealers. In the beginning, it's first one's free. Yeah, but I think they've got a model that is set up around advertising and drawing their users to other paying clients. So they've pretty much kept everything, for the most part, free the entire time. And so if they could then start marketing this then to companies that would be targeting single people who are trying to be in the dating game, they could make a lot more money off of that. So legitimately, it might stay free. And this could be really great competition for any of those other paid dating sites. My girlfriend's been on a lot of them and checked them all out. And she loves Facebook dating. Huh. Okay. Yeah, the options. Now, is this the friend that had the second date that went terrible with this guy who really tried but did everything wrong on the date? Yeah, so she did meet this guy on Facebook dating. And the first date went great. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay. Like, he was her look. He was uh, newly divorced. So he actually told her, um, you're the first date I've been on since my divorce. And she was like, "Uh uh-oh. And she said to me, that's never good because he's in a place that I'm not in anymore. Like he's in the beginning. I've already got it figured out. He's still reeling probably from his divorce. So she was a little bit nervous. But the second date... He, like, told her to meet him at his house, and she showed up. The house was a mess. He was a mess. They were supposed to go to dinner and a movie. So what kind of mess are we talking about? I need need details. Did she have details? Clutter. Mess. Uh Uh-huh. Dishes. Dishes. Clothes. It's it's the the wrong strategy. Everything's mismatched as far as the furniture. And, you know, I mean, I get it. Well, that's different. Yeah, I know. That's different. Now you're starting to sound like a snob. At first you had because it it was dirty and messy is different than Kevin. He had two different color couches. Clothes everywhere. Just uh, stuff scattered everywhere. And, And she's like, why would you invite somebody over if it's messy? But, you know, he's new in the game. He doesn't know how this whole thing works. Maybe he's just getting his feet wet again. So messy, I think, is different than dirty. Dirty is never excusable. You never have somebody home. It was both. If your house is dirty, you can't have people over. No. Messy, if you have a few clothes on the side, but you can't have dishes in the... if, if If it's new and you're trying to court somebody, it's not the right move. You're right, yeah. And then he was like, oh, well, instead of going to a movie and dinner, like we had promised, let's just stay here and Netflix and chill. And she was like, ah, no. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, she did say something that I think is awesome. When you're in a situation where you feel like, I don't want to be a part of this, it's okay to say, peace, I'm out. And that's what she did. Whereas she said 10 years ago, she might have felt bad for the guy and just hung around and... Sympathy is not a reason to date someone. Right. Or, or, or to stick around either. And mm. it's okay to say, you know what? This is not my scene. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is what she did. But guys, come on. Do better.
Getting some text here. Somebody had said, yeah, I met my spouse on Facebook dating November 2019. So I guess it's been around for a while. I had no idea. Yeah, I said it was much better than any other dating site out there. And now we're going on three years and happier than I've ever been. Look at that. Love is in the air. And my other girlfriend was telling me that she met somebody, too. So it's like, wow, is Facebook dating like the best kept secret? It's the new hotness. Love us in the end. Jaybird, you're single. Why don't you get your ass on Facebook dating? Nah, you know, I'll, people know where to find me. Mm-hmm. If they want a piece of the bird. They, they know how to get to. They know how to get to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming up, we got the after the show podcast. Going to get to a lot of your emails that you sent. Also, going to be debating: is anxiety hereditary or is it <laughs> learned? Is it nature or nurture when it comes to anxiety? We'll get uh, your thoughts on that as well. It's actually a topic on the KBJ Show Facebook page. You can jump on. Yes, we mm-hmm. are into it. All right. Before we get to that, though, Bird, if you would wrap it all up today with your thought. Don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Mm. Oh. Okay. Simple but good, Bird. Oh. The KVJ Show on 97.9 WRMF.